Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to build this complete website really from the beginning. We're going to use HTML and CSS to build it and make it responsive. If you are a beginner and don't know how to start designing your own website, then you are at the right place. We're also going to use a tiny code of JavaScript to make this website interactive. We will start with an absolutely empty HTML page and end up with a complete website. After this tutorial, you will be able to make your own website with HTML and CSS with ease. You will understand the importance of media query, CSS variable, flexbox, grid layout and more. For this build, we are using only HTML and CSS for design, old carousel to create carousel, font awesome website for icons, google fonts for font family and add scrolling animation using animation on scroll library. You can notice. This website is absolutely responsive for mobile, tablet and any kind of device. So let's take a look at what we have inside this tutorial. When you open this website, you will see this amazing homepage with this curved background image. On the top, we're gonna create this navigation menu which is undoubtedly absolutely responsive and has navigation links. Then we have a simple site title with background image and a button. Just after that, when you scroll down, we have a beautiful looking cards with auto sliding functionality. After every 3 seconds, card will slide automatically. You can notice when we scroll down, we had applied scrolling animation to the element. In this old carousel, we have old navigation and this old navigation help us to navigate to the different cards. And just after that, when you scroll down, you will have this beautiful design. On the left side, we have blog post and on the right side, we have sidebar. In the blog post, we're gonna add a different blog post with the zoom in zoom out effect and on the other hand we have a sidebar where we have categories popular post newsletter and popular tags and we're going to add animation on scroll effect to this category section as well at the last right here you can see after this last blog post we have a pagination and at the last we're going to create this beautiful footer for this website this footer looks amazing with this dark background isn't it now once i scroll down i reach to the footer so if i want to scroll up I'm going to use this button. When you click on this button, you're going to scroll at the top of this website. So this button will smoothly scroll up at the top of your website. Now this is all about desktop devices. What about mobile and tablet? Let's see if this website is responsive for mobile or tablet devices or not. Now as you can see, this website is completely responsive for mobile. In this website, we have put every section in a very neat way. So, the user will not disturb while using this website. If you open this website on tablet, it looks amazing on tablet as well. Alright. Now, let's get started and see how to create this amazing website. But before we get started, make sure you have a basic understanding of HTML and CSS. And you also need an editor to write your code and a browser to execute HTML and CSS. So just download and install VS Code Editor and also install browser in your system. We're gonna use VS Code Editor to write code and use Chrome browser to execute it. Once you complete all these steps, let's get started and build this website. So before taking your too much time, let's get started. Now let's first create a structure of this project. So as you can see here, I have opened the VS Code editor. I just opened the blocker folder inside this VS Code editor. The blocker folder is absolutely empty right now. We're going to create a structure of this project inside this folder. You can name this folder anything, but for the reference, I'm going to name it blogger. Now if you're a beginner and don't know how to open the folder in VS Code editor, then just click on this file menu and select this open folder and open your empty folder inside this VS Code editor. Now, once you open your folder, make sure the folder is absolutely empty and in this folder, we're going to create a structure of this project. So in this empty folder, I'm going to first create a new folder and name that folder assets. And in this folder, we're going to have different images which we are going to use throughout this tutorial. So I'm going to just copy few images and paste it inside this folder. So I'm going to just copy these images and paste it inside my project directory inside this asset folder right here. 
So I'm going to just say here, paste. So I will just paste all these images inside this asset folder. You can see here, if I open the Visual Studio Code Editor, you can see inside this asset folder, I have this blog post, this Instagram folder, this popular post. Now we don't need to take care of this folder because you don't need to touch it. Just leave it as it is. Just after that, outside of this folder, in this root directory of your project, just create another folder and name it CSS. Now in this folder, we're going to put all the CSS file which we are going to create throughout this tutorial. Just after that, inside this root directory, I'm going to create another folder and name it JS. Now in this JS folder, I'm going to put all the JavaScript file and just after that, I'm going to create my main file which is index.html. So I'm going to select this new file icon and name my file index.html. Now as you can see, this is a simple index.html file. So I'm going to first create a simple HTML5 snippet. So as you know, to create a simple HTML5 snippet, you can press exclamation mark and press tab, right? So this will create a simple HTML5 snippet for you and just change this title to blogger, right? Just save the changes. Now, as you can see, I just have a simple HTML5 snippet and in this snippet, I'm going to have a simple doc type HTML and then we have the head section inside it. We're going to have meta tag, the viewport and on the line 6, right here, you can see I have the viewport content width is equal to device minus width. So this line make this project responsive. So make sure you have this line inside the head section. Just after that, just after that, we have the title then the body section of this application and the closing HTML tag. Now you know how to create a simple HTML5 snippet. Let's get started and create a style.css file to specify custom styling to this HTML. So I'm going to select this CSS folder and inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file and name that file style.css. And before we move further, I'm going to link this file to index.html inside this head section. So I'm going to create here a command and I just say here custom style. It always a best practice to create a documentation for every code. So I'm going to just create here a command and just say custom style. And in the link tag in the href attribute, I'm going to just say dot forward slash, then select my CSS folder and my style dot CSS file. Just after that, I also want to use JavaScript in this project. So I'm going to create JavaScript file inside this JS folder. So I'm going to select this folder and create here main.js file. Now we're going to link this file. So before this closing body tag right here, I'm going to create a script tag and in the source attribute of this script tag, I'm going to just say dot forward slash select this JS folder and this main.js file. Now before we move further, I'm going to create here a command and just say here custom JavaScript now, once we have the project structure ready, I'm going to just open my finished website in the browser. So as you can see, this website is looks stunning right now. So we'll start from the beginning. So we'll start from the top. So I'm going to first create this navigation menu and move further. So I'm going to just open my editor and in the body section right here, I'm going to first create documentation. So I'm going to create here a command and name it navigation. And I'm going to just add some space here like this. I just copy this command, paste it down here and just indicate this is a closing command. And inside this navigation command, I'm going to create a nav tag. Now if you're a beginner and want to create a division tag, you will create here a backhead, then create a division tag like this. But if you're using Visual Studio Code Editor, you just need to say here div and press tab. It is going to create a division tag for you. Now what if you want to specify class to this div? You will say class and specify the class name to this div like this. But in VS Code, to simplify this work, we just need to say here dot and specify your class name. So if you want to specify my class to the division tag, you can say here my class. So you just need to say here dot and specify the class name. And when you press tab, it is going to create a division tag with the class my class. You are not limited to specify only this class you can add one or multiple classes at the same time. Now, what if you want to create a different tag? Now, let's say you want to create anchor tag and want to specify a class. 
So I'm going to create here an anchor tag. So to create an anchor tag, you just need to specify the anchor tag A and specify dot here to create a class and specify the class name. So if I just say here my class and press tab, I'm going to have here an anchor tag with the href attribute. Along with that, I'm going to have my class with the name my class. Now, what if we want to create an anchor tag with ID? In that case, you just need to create here an anchor tag and just specify here hash to create an ID and specify the name of your ID. So I'm going to say here my ID. And when you press tab, this will create anchor tag with the ID my ID. As simple as that. And if you want to create a division tag, you don't need to specify here div and then specify an ID. Instead, you just need to specify here hash and specify the name of the ID. So I'm going to say here my ID. So when you press tab, this will create a default division tag with the ID my ID. You are not limited to create only anchor tags or division tag, just like the h1 heading tag with the class h1, or you can create a span tag with the class icon, or you can create a paragraph with the ID para. That's very simple to create any tag in Visual Studio Code Editor. You can see me doing this throughout this tutorial. So I'm going to just get rid of these all tags and create here a navigation menu. So I'm going to first create here a nav tag. So I'm going to just say here nav and press tab. So this will create nav tag for us. Now this is not necessary to create nav tag for navigation menu, but for the reference, you should use nav tag while creating a nav menu. So I'm going to create here a nav and to this nav, I want to specify a class. So instead of doing this, I'm going to just say here nav dot and specify the class name. So I want to specify here nav class to this nav tag. When I press tab, I'm going to have a nav tag with the class nav, right? Now inside this nav tag, I'm going to create division tag with the class nav menu. Along with that, I want to add two classes to this div. So simply I'm going to put here dot and specify here nav menu class and I want to add one more class to this div, so I'm going to put dot again and specify flex row. When I press tab, as you can see, I have two classes here. First one is now menu and second one is flex row. You can add multiple classes if you want. Inside this div, I want to create this blogger text. So I'm going to create here a division tag and specify a class now brand. And in this div, I'm going to create anchor tag with the class text gray. And just after that, in the href attribute, I'm going to specify hash because I don't want to redirect this page anywhere. So I'm going to put here hash. So when you click on this anchor tag, this will reload the whole page. Just after that, in the text section right here, I'm going to specify blogger, the name of this website. If you want, you can choose image an icon or anything else. I'm going to choose a simple text here. Now, as you can see, you have your basic navigation menu ready, but still you don't have the navigation items, the social links, and as always the hamburger menu. So we're going to do that after a few minutes, but just for now, just open this file in the live server. So just right click here in the index.html file and just select open with live server. We already installed this live server extension. Just click on this open with live server. This will open this file in the live server. You have your blogger text here. Now, if we take a look at this blogger text, this is not look like as we did in this finished website. That is because of we did not specify any styling to these classes. So we're going to add styling to these classes inside this style.css file, which we already linked to the index.html right here. Now, I just want to add some style to this navigation menu so it looks like the finished website. So I'm going to just open the style.css file and just toggle this window on the right side like this. Now in the style.css file, I'm going to first select the HTML, then select the body and I want to remove margin from all the elements. So I'm going to select margin 0% box sizing border box. So this will include border and padding to the width and height of the element. And just after that, I'm going to see here overflow x hidden. Now, once we have this HTML and body tag, I'm going to create here a command and 
I want to create here a CSS command and just add some space and just say here navbar. You can name this navigation menu styling anything but I'm gonna name it navbar. Just copy this command, paste it here and just specify this is a closing command. So if I want to style this navigation menu, I will style it inside this block, right? Inside this comment block, I'm going to just select the nav class and I want to specify background color to this nav. So I'm going to say here background and I want to specify white color to this background. So I'm going to just say here white. I'm going to specify padding to it. So I'm going to specify zero for the top and bottom padding and two rem for the left and right padding. Just after that, I'm going to specify height, which is 0 rem and minimum height is going to be 10 viewport height. Now, if you take a look at these two properties, you're not going to understand what I want to create here. Now, if you don't know why we use this minimum height and this height, then let me explain. In the last video, we just created a responsive navigation menu where we have these two properties. Using these two properties, we're going to create a collapsible navigation menu. So when we click on the toggle menu, I just want to collapse all the navigation items. And when I click on the toggle menu again, I want to hide all the nav items. So that is why I use these two properties for that. You will understand everything after a few minutes. But just for now, keep in mind, we use hide to collapse the navigation menu. And we use minimum height to specify height to this nav. Just after this minimum height, I'm going to say overflow hidden and save the changes when i save it you can see i have a space here so as you can see here i just added a left and right padding to this nav now just after that i want to style this blogger text i'm going to first select the nav tag and then specify here now brand class which we specified to the div and then select the anchor tag so as you can see if i just specify here font size 1.6 frame this style will apply to this text right now just after that i just want to specify some padding to it so i'm going to just say padding one ram to the top and bottom and zero for the left and right this will add some padding and then i want to remove this border so i'm going to just say here text decoration none when i save it you can see this border is gone now the downside of specifying this property here is whenever you specify this anchor tag, you need to repeat this property. In this HTML theme, I don't want a border to my any anchor tag. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just back here and create a command and just specify here global classes. So in this command, I'm going to put my all global classes. So I'm going to close it like this. In this command, I'm going to specify all the global classes which we're going to specify to the element. Now in this global classes, I'm going to first select my anchor tag and specify text decoration none and save it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this property from here. So I don't need to repeat this property whenever I use anchor tag in this style sheet. Now just after that, I'm going to just back to my index.html file and just create these navigation items and these social icons. So I'm going to just open my index.html file and in this file, just after this div right here, I'm going to create another div and in this div, I'm going to create another list. So I'm going to say here ul and I want to specify a class to this ul tag. So I'm going to specify here now items and in this ul tag, I'm going to create my li tag so i'm going to create here a list and specify now link class to this li tag now inside this li tag i'm going to create anchor tag and just specify a text here home so this is my first navigation item i'm going to save it and if i open my website you can see i have this navigation item here now i just want to create my second navigation item so i'm going to just select this line and just press alt shift down so when I press Alt Shift down, this will duplicate these three lines. If you are using Windows, now in VS Code Editor, it's very easy to copy these lines, right? Now let's move on and just change 
this navigation item to category. I'm going to name it category. You can specify anything else. Just after that, I'm going to select these three lines again. Press Alt Shift down to duplicate this line. I'm going to do the same to create my fourth navigation item. Now I'm going to name this category to our cry and this is going to be pages. Oops, I think here I just forgot to add here anchor tag, closing anchor tag. Now I just wanted to create one more navigation item. So I'm going to select these three lines and press Alt Shift down key. So this will create one more navigation item and I'm going to name it contact us. So as you can see, you have your different navigation items. But if you increase the size of this minimum height right here, if you specify 40 viewport height, you can see you have your all navigation items here. Just after that, I'm going to just say here, just after this division tag right here, I'm going to create another div and I want to specify a class to this div. So I'm going to just put here dot social and I also want to add one more class. So I'm going to just say here dot again. And then specify text gray and when I press tab this will specify social and text gray class to this div and in this div I'm going to create my social icons so I'm going to add anchor tag here I don't want to add here a class I'm going to just put anchor tag and press tab and just specify here hash because I don't want to redirect this anchor tag anywhere and in this anchor tag I'm going to first add here a Facebook icon as you know I don't have any library to add any icon so just for now, I'm going to just say here F for Facebook. Then I'm going to copy this line, press Alt Shift down to duplicate these lines and just change this F. So I'm going to just say here Instagram. So I'm going to say here I change this F to Twitter and just change this F to YouTube. I'm going to get rid of this last anchor tag and just save it. Now, as you can see here, you have your different icons. Now in this place, you're going to have your Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter icon. Now, once I have the navigation item, I'm going to style this navigation item to make it responsive. So I'm going to just open my style.css file. And in this style.css, I'm going to first toggle this window on the right side like this. And in this file, I'm going to style this navigation. Now, if you open your index.html file, you can see I just specified flex row class to this div. Now I just want to first specify some properties to this flex row class. So I'm going to open style.css file and in this global section right here inside it, I'm going to create a class flex row and specify some properties. So I'm going to specify here display flex and then specify flex direction row. Now when I save it, you can see all my navigation items is in the same row. What I'm going to do is just after that, I just want to add some space between these navigation items. I want to center these navigation item links and I want to place these social links on the right side of the screen. I'm going to do that using a very simple way. So I'm going to just create here. I'm going to first select the nav class and then select nav menu. And to this nav menu, I'm going to specify justify content space between. So when you specify this property, and save it you can see I have space between these navigation items your navigation links is in the center of the document and your social links is in the right side of the screen now you can do the same thing if you specify these two properties to this now menu like this if I save it you can see you have the same result but if you want to reuse these properties you need to define it again so instead of specifying this property to this now menu I'm going to create a new class which is flex row and specify that property right here so we can use it as many times as we want just after that i'm going to save the changes and i just wanted to specify one more property here which is flex wrap save the changes and let me now let me explain what this property does now let me just erase this property just get rid of this property just open the inspect tool so i'm going to press ctrl shift i if you are using mac then just press command shift i now as you can see here you have your navigation menu if you decrease the size of this navigation menu you can see you have your awkward result here i don't want this result what i want i want to collapse these social icons down here 
when the size of this viewport is really minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just specify here flex wrap wrap. When I save it, you can see if I minimize this viewport, you can see my social icons is collapsed to the next line. This will happen to the nav links as well, right? So this is the benefit of this property. Now just after that, I'm going to style these nav links. So I'm going to just open this CSS file and right here, I'm going to just say nav and I just specify nav items right here. You can see to the UL tag, I just specify nav items. So I'm going to select it now items and I want to just remove this text. So I'm going to say here list text type none. When I save it, you can see I don't have this text here. Just after that, I'm going to say here display flex, save the changes and I want to say here margin zero. So when you specify display flex property, this will align all these navigation links in the same row. Now what if I use this UL tag again? In that case, you need to repeat this property again. So I'm going to just cut this property and in the global section right here, I'm going to create UL tag and I'm going to specify that property here. So we don't need to repeat it again whenever we use UL tag. Now just after that, I'm going to start this navigation links. So I'm going to open the style.css file and down here, I'm going to first select the nav class and just after that, I'm going to select now items and then select now link. To this now link, I'm going to specify padding 1.6 rem to the top and bottom and 1 rem to the left and right. Save the changes. This will add some padding. Then I'm going to specify here font size, which is 1.1 rem and position which is relative. Save the changes. And just after that, let me just add some styling to the social icons. So down here, I'm going to just specify social icon styling. So I'm going to select now, then select the social class. And to this social class, I'm going to specify padding, which is 1.4 rem to the top and bottom and specify zero for the left and right. Save the changes. So this will add padding to these social icons. I also want to add some padding to this text as well. Now to add padding to your brand name, I'm going to just specify here, display block. When I specify that, and when I save the changes, you can see I have this padding to this nav brand. Now the navigation menu is ready now, but as you can see, this navigation is not look like the finished navigation menu. Now the time is to add the social icons in the application. I just wanted to add the social icons in the project and replace with the hard coded text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open font awesome website. So I'm going to just type fontawesome.com and from this website, you can download more than free 1000 icons. So I'm going to just open this fontawesome.com website and just click on this download right here. So just click on this free for web. I just download all the icons. So I'm going to just click on this free for web and download this package. I already have this package. So I'm going to just open it. Once you download this package, just extract it. You just need to extract this package. So I'm going to just right click here and say extract here. Now the package is extracted. Now you just need to open this folder. So I'm going to just open it. Now in this folder, you just need to take care of two things. You need to copy this web font folder and also you need this all.css file. Or you can use this all.mean.css file. So I'm going to just use this all.css file here. So I'm going to copy it and paste it inside my project directory in the CSS folder. So I'm going to open my project directory and inside this project directory, I'm going to copy this all.css file in this CSS folder, right? So I'm going to paste it here. Now, once I have this all.css file, I can use all these fonts in my website. But before we move further, I just need to copy this web fonts folder and place it in the root directory of your project. So you just need to copy this folder and in this folder you have all your fonts. So you just need to copy it and paste it inside your project directory in the root folder right here. Right? Now if you open your editor, you can see in the CSS folder you have your all.css file 
and in the root directory you have your web fonts folder and in this folder you have your different icons right now what you need to do is if you are not familiar with font or some website then let me just explain so to understand how this font is imported in the website you need to just open the font awesome website and click on the documentation from the documentation you will understand how to use this font and how to import that in your website now as you can see in the basic uses you have your i tag and inside this i tag you need to specify a class of the icon now as you can see here in the documentation this is how you can import this font in your website now as you can see we have a class here with a fast prefix using this prefix you are going to tell the font of the website which font you want to use then you just need to specify the name of your icon now at this point we want to include the camera icon so we use here fa camera now once you include this tag in your web application you will have your camera icon in your website so using different classes and different icon name you can import different icons in your website now just open the index.html file and instead specifying this hard coded values here i'm going to just specify here a facebook icon so i'm going to search it on the font awesome website so i'm going to click on these icons so i'm going to search for facebook so i'm going to search it here facebook and you can see as a result you can get your facebook icon so i'm going to choose this icon so i'm going to just open this icon now i want to import this icon in my application so i just need to copy this html tag so i'm going to just copy it by clicking on this tag like this and just paste it right here right save the changes when i save it you can see i have my facebook icon here now as you can see you don't have anything here because you did not link this all.css file to your index file so what we need to do is we need to first include this file in the index you need to link this file to your index file in the head section right here i'm going to create a command and just specify here font awesome icons and link this file using link tag so i'm going to say here link specify the css folder and all.css file when i save the changes and open my website you can see i have my facebook icon here right as simple as that so i'm going to just copy this i tag right from here and instead instead of this i i'm going to paste this i tag again and just change this class so i'm going to change it to instagram like this and keep in mind you don't need to remove this prefix because using this prefix font also will understand which font you want to include right now just after that just get rid of this third anchor tag text paste the icon again and just change it to twitter so i'm going to say here twitter just after that just get rid of this youtube icon paste the i tag again get rid of this class and then just say here youtube save the changes when you save it you can see you have your facebook instagram twitter and youtube icon right now your navigation menu is not completely but looks similar to the finish navigation menu now what we want i want to specify some font families to this navigation menu which we are going to use throughout this tutorial so we are going to import few font from the google font and specify that to this navigation menu along with that we're going to specify colors to make it more attractive now what i want i want to specify font families to this navigation brand to this nav links and to these social icons so instead using my system font because everyone don't have the same font in their system we're going to use we're going to use google font and include that font in the project so let's see how to do that i'm going to just close this tab and just open a new tab and just say here google font and from this google font website from this font.google.com i'm going to just choose my favorite font you are not limited to choose only these fonts so i'm going to just choose here i'm going to first select my first font abel so this is my first font so i'm going to click on this select this font icon so as you can see i have just selected my first font so i'm going to do that quickly now as you can see i have just selected five fonts for this theme you are not limited to only choose these fonts you are free to choose any font for this theme that's upon you i'm going to choose these fonts if you ever watch my previous lectures we use import statement to import these fonts but instead using the cdn i'm going to download this font and just put this inside my project directory and then use it 
So instead of using this import statement, I'm going to download it. So you just need to click on this download button right from here. So I'm going to just click on this download button and download this zip package. Now, once you download this font, this will something look like this and you just need to extract this file. So you just need to right click here and say extract files and just press OK. So this will extract all this font in this fonts folder. Now what you need to do is you just need to copy this folder and place it inside the root directory of your project. And as you can see in the root directory of my project in the blogger folder right here, I'm going to paste that folder. I'm going to paste my font folder. Right now, if you open your editor, you can see you have your fonts folder here and you have your different fonts. Now, what you want to do is you want to use this font in this project. To use this font, I'm going to create here a new file and call that file fonts.css. And in this file, you need to create a font face rule. And so, to create a font face rule, you just need to add font face. And to this font face, you need to first specify the font family. So, I'm going to say here font family. I'm going to specify the name for this font. So, I'm going to choose Abel, which is the actual name of this font. You are free to specify any name to this font, but I'm going to choose the default name for this font. And just after that, you need to specify the source of this font. So, as you know, we have this font in this font folder. Now, I'm going to choose this Abel font, this regular font. I'm going to choose this Abel font. So, I'm going to specify the source property like this. And in the URL, I'm going to specify single quote and specify the path of this font. Now, as you can see here, you don't have this fonts folder right here in the path. So instead specifying dot forward slash, which is refers to the current directory, you need to specify here double dot and specify forward slash, right? So this will refers to the root directory. So you just need to select your fonts and select your font here. So I'm going to select my Apple font and the TTF file, right? This one. When you specify this font family in the CSS, this will specify this font to the text. Save the changes and I'm going to just create a comment here. Just copy this statement, create a comment and just paste it like this, right? Now, I'm going to just copy this comment, paste it down here. And at this point, I'm going to include my next font, which is Anton. I'm going to copy this statement like this paste it down here and I'm going to change this font family to Anton and change this source attribute. So I'm going to change here right here. I'm going to specify font folder the Anton font family and then this Anton regular TTF file. Now just after that I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to copy the statement. So I'm going to select it and press alt shift down right like this just after that i'm going to change this font family text in the command so i'm going to change it to josephine and change this font family as well josephine like this and just change this source attribute so i'm going to select my font folder then select this josephine folder now right now you can see you have your different font families you can see you have your font bold, you have your light font, you have your regular font. Now you can choose any font here that's upon you, but I'm going to choose this regular font. So I'm going to select this regular.ttf file, right? If you want, you can change it as well. That's upon you. Just after that, I'm going to copy these lines. So I'm going to press Alt Shift down and change this font family. Just change this path as well. I'm going to change it to this one i'm going to do the same alt shift down and just change this font family and this source attribute now you can see here you have different fonts but i'm going to choose the regular font so i'm going to select this livic regular ttf file now this is not necessary to specify only these names you can specify any name what you would really like to this font family and you can use that font family using your custom name now, just after that, I'm going to change this comment as well and this one as well, right? Save the changes. Just after that, you don't need to include this file in your index.html. Instead, just open your style.css file. And as you know, you just need to import this file in the style.css. 
to include any CSS file in the CSS, you have import statement, right? So I'm going to say here import URL and specify the path of this font.css file. So in the single code, I'm going to say dot dot forward slash. This will refer to the root directory. Then select the CSS folder and select your fonts.css file like this, right? Save the changes. And now you can use any font from these font families, right? As simple as that. Once you have this file, I want to specify font family to my navigation band, to this navigation band. So I'm going to just open it, open the style.css file and right here, I'm going to specify font family and I want to specify this font, the first one, this one. To use this font, you just need to use this Apple name. So I'm going to use this font family. So I'm going to open my style.css file and just specify here Abel like this. Now save the changes. Now if I open my website, you can see the font family is changed. Now what if this font family is not included and not applied to this text? In that case, you need to specify the fallback value to this font family. So I'm going to specify fallback value here. So I'm going to say here cursive, right? Save the changes. And as you can see, you have the same result here. Now, just after that, what if you want to reuse this value? In that case, you need to copy it or you need to write it again. So I'm going to solve this problem by creating a variable in the CSS. Creating a CSS variable is very easy. Using CSS variable, you can reuse the value multiple times. And using variables is very useful when you work with hex value and the RGB colors. Now, let me just create a variable on the top right here. I'm going to create here a variable. So to create a variable in CSS, you need to first select the root selector. So I'm going to first select the root and in this root selector, I'm going to create theme font families. So I'm going to just say here theme font families. Now, just after that, now let me explain how you can create variable in the CSS. Now to create a variable, you just need to specify the name of the variable. So the variable will always start with the prefix double dash. So you need to specify here double dash and specify the name of your variable. So I'm going to specify here a name, Abel, and specify my value here. So I'm going to specify my value. So I'm going to just say here, Abel in the single quote, and then specify my fallback value. So I'm going to say here, cursive, like this, right? So now save the changes, and instead of using this hard-coded value, I'm going to use here a variable. So to use this variable, you need to call a method var. So you just need to say here var, and in this method, you can call this abel variable, right? So this variable will specify this value to this font family. Save the changes. Now, just after that, now if you are using VS Code, you don't have to write this var method. Instead, you just need to specify here hyphen hyphen and specify the name of your variable and this will suggest the name of your variable this one so when you press enter this will automatically create a var method and specify the variable inside this method as simple as that save the changes i'm going to just create few more variables on the top right here and then i'm going to create here and tone the second font family specify the fallback value then create my third variable I'm going to create my fourth variable and the last I'm going to create my last variable. So now I can use these values using these variables. So you don't need to use these values to specify to the font family. You just need to specify this variable name. Now just out of that in every web application you use colors because colors makes your application more attractive. So in this website, we're also going to create a colors, but instead hard coding these colors, we're going to specify this color to the variable and use that variable to specify the color property. For example, so let's say I want to specify a color to this anchor tag. I'm going to say here color and I want to specify white color to this anchor tag. I'm going to say here white, right? This is very simple, but what if the color is in the hex value? Let's say if the color is in the hex value like this. 3, uh, 4, 9, 5, 4. Now, if we take a look at this value, 
then this is very complicated. You will not remember this value. And what if you want to reuse this value? In that case, you will copy this property and specify to the next element like this, right? So this will take you too much time. To save this problem, I'm going to just get rid of this value and specify to the variable. So I'm going to create here a variable. So I'm going to first create here a command and specify theme colors. And here I'm going to create a variable and name that variable text gray. And to this variable, I'm going to specify this value. So I'm going to first specify hash and specify this value, right? Now, if you want to use this color, you don't have to specify this value. Instead, just need to say here text gray, right? So now this is very simple to use this hex value. Save the changes. So this will specify text gray color to the anchor tag, right? So as you can see, all my text is changed with this gray color. Now let me just create a few more colors here. And if you don't know where you can get this hex value, then just open the new tab. I'm going to just close this tab and create a new tab. Open new tab and just search for colors.co. From this website, you can get your different hex values. So you just need to click on this view all palettes and choose your favorite color. So I'm going to just create a few color variable which we are going to use throughout this tutorial. So I'm going to just quickly create that. So I'm going to just create here a new color and name it text light and specify hex value here. Just out of that, I'm going to just create one more color. So I'm going to name it PG color and specify value. And just after that, I'm going to create a variable of white. I'm going to create midnight green color. So I'm going to name it midnight. Now just after that, we are also going to use the gradient color in this theme. So I'm going to create here command and specify here gradient color. So you will understand here is the gradient color. And here I want to use my gradient color. So instead of creating this gradient color, I'm going to just open a new tab and get my gradient color from web gradients. From this website, you can get your different gradients colors which you wanted to use in your website. Right? So I'm going to just get my gradient color from this website. So I'm going to choose this gradient, right? This one. So I'm going to just copy the CSS. So I'm going to just click here and just paste it right here. Save the changes. And instead, using this property, I'm going to get rid of this property and just specify here sky. So using the sky variable, you can access this gradient color. Save the changes and just after that, I'm going to specify all these colors to my HTML elements. As simple as that. Now, just after that, I'm going to change the size of this font. So, I'm going to just say here font size and I want to specify here 1.6 RAM font size. So, I'm going to increase the size of this blogger text. Just after that, I'm going to specify font family and font size to these nav links. So, I'm going to just say here to this nav links. I'm going to specify font family and I'm going to choose here this font and font size is going to be 1.1 rem. Save the changes. Now I want to just change this font family because it looks similar. So as you can see, I have a different font to this uh, nav brand class. So I'm going to change it. So I'm going to change it to this one and save the changes. So it looks like the finished navigation menu. Now just after that, I want to specify some hover effect to this navigation menu. So right here, so I'm going to just say here, when I hover on this navigation link, so I'm going to copy this selector and paste it down here. When I hover on this nav link, I want to specify a background color. So I'm going to say here background color and call the variable midnight this one right save the changes and when you hover on these nav links you can see you have this background color just after that i want to change the color of these nav links so i'm going to just paste the selector again like this and when i hover on these nav links i want to change the color of the anchor tag and specify a color 
white so yeah the changes so you can see this type of result here just after that i'm going to add some space between these social icons so down here just after this social class i'm going to select now again select the social and select the eye tag and i'm going to specify padding to the social icons so i'm going to say padding zero for the top and bottom and 0.2 ram for the left and right and you can see i have some padding between these social icons now when i hover on these social icons i want to change the color of these icons so i just want to say here now social and select the eye tag and when i hover on it i want to change the color of this icon if you ask me why i use here hex value instead of using variable and why i choose hex value here because i'm going to use this value only once that is why i use this hex value here instead storing this value in the variable so i'm going to save it now as you can see when you hover on this social icon so you can see you have this color now just after that let me just check this navigation menu is responsive or not so i'm going to just open the inspect tool so i'm going to press ctrl shift i and as you can see this navigation is not responsive so to make this navigation responsive i'm going to use media query here so i'm going to just create here a command and just specify here a command and just say viewport less than or equal to 750 pixel and just after that i'm going to just close it like this now in this block in this comment block i'm going to just add a media query so i'm going to just say here media and if i want to explain what is media query then i would say using media query you can create a responsive website now for example now if the media query viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel i want to specify a different property to the html element let me give a very simple example to understand what is media query and how you can use it so i'm going to just say here media only screen i'm going to apply this media to the screen and i'm going to just say here max width is equal to or less than 1750 pixel i'm going to specify css property to the element if the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel so whatever you put inside this block is going to apply to the element if the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel now i'm going to just create here a now and as you can see here i just specify white background color to this now so instead by specifying this white background color i'm going to just say here background black save the changes open the browser now as you can see if the viewport right here you can see the width of the viewport is less than 750 pixel or equal to 750 pixel i'm going to specify black color to the navigation now let me just increase the size now as you can see if the viewport is greater than 750 pixel i'm going to specify the default property which is the default white color to this navigation menu and if the viewport this width is less than 750 or equal to 750 i'm going to specify black background color to this navigation menu so if the viewport is less than 750 you can see i have this background color to this navigation menu right as simple as that so using this media query i can specify different properties to these html elements so i'm going to just get rid of this background property and i'm going to select now menu and here i'm going to say flex direction column now just after that just save the changes and just open the viewport and as you can see here if the viewport is greater than 750 pixel i'm not going to have any result here but now if the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel i'm going to specify this flex direction to the now menu right now let me just decrease the size of the viewport right so as you can see the division tag is collapsed to the next line now let me just show you what is the before and after effect of this property now if we don't have this property you're going to get this type of result right but if you have this property you're going to get this type of result now just after that i also want to specify flex direction column to this now items so i'm going to just specify here a comma and then specify now and just say now items you can see you have this type of result because the height of this navigation menu is 10 viewport height you are not going to see the overflow content 
now if you increase the height of this navigation you're going to see the rest of the content so if i just increase the height right from here if i increase it to 100 viewport height you can see you have your navigation menu here right now just out of that what i want when the viewport is less than 750 pixel i want to hide all this content and i want to add here a toggle menu and when i click on that toggle menu i want to display all these navigation items with these social links so to do that i'm going to first specify here 10 viewport height save the changes and this will hide all these overflow content and just after that as you can see if the viewport is greater than 750 pixel you're going to get your navigation items right you can see your navigation items now just after that i want to add here a toggle menu so i'm going to just open my index.html file and down here just after this div i'm going to create another div to create my toggle icon so i'm going to just create here a division tag and specify a class toggle collapse and in this div i'm going to create another div with the class toggle icons and inside this div i'm going to specify i tag with the class fast and specify the icon name so i'm going to say here fa bars so i want to add here bars icon so i'm going to just here bars save the changes so as you can see you have your icon here right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just let me just open this website now as you can see here you have your toggle icon here now let me just style it so i'm going to open this style.css file and down here i'm going to just style it so i'm going to select now then select toggle collapse class and to this class i'm going to first specify position so i'm going to say here position absolute and i want to specify this toggle menu on the right side of the screen so i'm going to just say here top zero and just specify width which is 100 percent and i'm going to specify cursor pointer so the changes and just after that i want to display this icon on the right side of the screen so i'm going to just say i'm going to select now then select the toggle collapse class and then select toggle icons and to this toggle icons i'm going to specify display flex and i want to align this toggle on the right side of the screen so i'm going to say here justify content and i'm going to say flex end save the changes oops i think something is going wrong here uh, in, this, in the index.html file yeah yeah i just misspell the collapse spelling which is like this collapse so i'm going to just specify here to this icon i'm going to specify padding 1.7 for the top and bottom and zero for the left and right now at this point you are not going to see this icon because i have just specified 100 percent width to this toggle collapse class if i just specify here 90 90 percent then you can see you have your toggle icon here now i just wanted to increase the font size the size of this icon so i'm going to just say here so i'm going to select this selector so i'm going to copy it paste it down here and select my eye tag and i want to specify here font size and i'm going to say 1.4 rem and i want to specify a color so i'm going to say here color text gray right Save the changes and you can see i just increased the font size of this icon let me just open the inspect tool and now what i want when the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel i want to display only this icon and hide all the rest of the content and when the viewport is greater than 750 pixel i want to hide this icon this toggle icon right and display all these navigation links so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just specify here display none and just select this selector and to the media query right down here I'm going to say now toggle collapse display initial save the changes and now you're not going to see this toggle icon here but when the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel all this navigation link is collapsed to the next line you're not going to see this navigation links and you have your toggle menu right here so if i just decrease the size of this viewport and when i have 
less than 750 pixel or equal to 750 pixel right you are going to get your toggle menu here now what i want when i click on this toggle menu i want to display all these navigation items so i'm going to just open main.js file and in this file i'm going to use javascript but instead of using vanilla javascript i'm going to use jquery because i'm going to use jquery for the old carousel as well so i'm going to add a jquery in this application to add a jquery you just need to open the browser and i'm going to just close this tab and just open new tab and search here jquery now once you search for the jquery you just need to select this jquery.com and once this website is open you just need to download the latest jquery library so just click on this download jquery and from here you can get the compressed or the development version of the library so i'm going to just use this compressed version so i'm going to just click on this compressed version so i'm going to click on this download the compressed production jquery dot jquery file so i'm going to click on it and as you can see you have this code so you just need to copy this code so you just need to select this code so i'm going to select it and press ctrl a to select all this code and just copy this code I just paste it inside the jquery file so i'm going to create a new file here in this js folder and name that file jquery dot mean dot js and in this file i'm going to put this code so i'm going to paste it right here so here the changes and now just after that as you can see we have the version 3.4.1 so i'm going to copy this version and use it right here so i'm going to rename this file to jquery version 3.4.1 you don't need to worry what we have in this file just close this file and in the index.html just link this jquery before this main.js file so i'm going to just copy this command paste it here and change it custom javascript file to jquery library and in the script tag to the source attribute i'm going to specify js folder and select my jquery 3.4.1 file save the changes and open the main.js file once we link this jquery i'm going to just create here so i'm going to just call the jquery object and just say here document dot ready and in the ready function i'm going to call a function the callback function and in this function so when the document is completely ready i'm going to execute this function and in this function what we're going to do is i'm going to select the nav tag so i'm going to create a variable of jquery so i'm going to call the jquery object and say now is equal to call the jquery object again and then just say here dot now so i'm going to select the now element and specify that to the variable and just after that i'm going to create here one more variable and name it toggle collapse and to this variable i'm going to specify my toggle collapse element so i'm going to say here toggle collapse now make sure this class is identical to the toggle collapse class to this class right now just after that i'm going to create on click event to this toggle collapse so when I click on this toggle menu I want to increase the height of this navigation menu so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create here a command and I'm going to first specify click event on toggle menu and I'm going to say here toggle collapse dot click I'm going to call the click event of this toggle menu so when I click on this toggle menu I want to execute this function and what we have in this function I'm going to say here I'm going to call now here the now variable dot and then I'm going to call toggle class method so I'm going to say here toggle class now using this method you can add and remove multiple CSS classes at the same time now just after that to this method I'm going to specify collapse class we don't have this class yet so I'm going to create this class in the style.css file but for now what we had done here when we click on this toggle menu i'm going to increase the height of this navigation menu so i'm going to first select this nav tag and using this collapse class i'm going to increase the height of this nav open the style.css file and down here i'm going to create that collapse class and specify height 
and height is going to be something 20 rem. Save the changes. Now, if I click on this toggle menu, right, I'm going to get my navigation item, but I just wanted to increase this value to 30 rem. Save the changes. Now you can see I have my toggle menu. So when I click on this toggle menu again, this will hide these navigation links, right? So this will happen using this toggle class. If you wanted to understand how to create this complete navigation menu, I have separate dedicated video for that. You can watch that video on the top right corner of the screen from here. But for now, I'm going to move on. And just after that, I'm going to open this style.css file. And to this nav class, I'm going to specify transition to the height property. So I'm going to say here height one second and specify the easing function so i'm going to say here ease in out say the changes and when i click on this toggle menu you are going to get this type of result right now as you can see the navigation menu is ready in the next lecture we are going to learn how to create this main section of this website i'm going to add these headings then create these buttons and add a beautiful background image right so i will see you in the next lecture now we know that how to create this responsive navigation menu now the next thing we need to understand is how to create this site title so i'm going to start with this beautiful background then add this h3 heading tag then add this h1 heading tag and along with that we have here a button and we add an hover effect to this button so let's see how to do that. So I'm going to just open the index.html file and in this file you can see this is my navigation section. I don't want to use it to create main section. This is the best practice to create a new tag to create your main site section. So I'm going to create here a comment and I'm going to name it main site section. You can name it anything but this is just a comment. So I'm going to just add some space here like this I'm gonna copy this command and paste it down here and specify this is the closing main section now in this command we're gonna specify the main tag now always use the main tag to put your main content of your website every time when you add a main section of your website put this in the main tag this is the best practice to create main section of your website so I'm gonna create here main tag I don't want to add any class to this main so I'm going to create here a main tag and now in this main tag I'm going to have a different section of this website so let's say in the first section I have this title and these buttons the site title in the next section I have this carousel the oval carousel and the third section I have this beautiful blog post so in the first section I'm going to specify the site title so I'm going to create here a section so I'm going to first create a command to indicate this is the first section so I'm going to name it site title now in this section I'm going to just close this command now once I have this main section now in this command I'm going to create section tag and specify class to it and I'm going to specify here site title class and in this section I'm going to simply create a division tag with the class site background this is not necessary to use only these classes if you want you can change it but make sure when you specify css you use the same class which is specified to this element in this division tag so i'm going to specify h3 heading tag to this text and h1 heading tag to this text so i'm going to create h3 heading tag here and specify here tools and travels just after that, I'm going to create h1 heading tag and specify here a text. So I'm going to say amazing place on earth. I'm going to specify demo text here. You can specify anything else. Now just after that, as you can see in the finished website, you have here a button. So to create a button, I'm going to use button tag. Along with that, I want to add a class to this button. So I'm going to say btn. And to this button, I have a text here, explore. I'm going to say explore here save the changes now as you can see if I open my website you can see I have this 
section here. Now I want to style this section and make this section like the finished website. So I'm going to just style this section. So I'm going to open my style.css file and just double this on the right side so you will understand what we are doing. Now just after that, after this navigation menu, I'm going to create a comment here and to this comment, I'm going to name it main content, right? And just close it using a closing comment like this. So you will understand this is the closing main section. Now in this comment, we will do all the main content styling, right? Now this is our first site title section. So I'm going to create a comment here and name that site title. Copy this comment, paste it here and just close it. We're going to specify site title styling inside this block, right? So I'm going to just create here. I'm going to first select the main tag and then select site title. So if you open your index.html file, you can see you have here a main tag and we have here a class site title. Now we don't need to select the now because we have this site title inside this main tag. Now once we select this site title, I'm going to specify some style to it. So I'm going to just specify here background and the first thing we need to specify is the background image. So I'm going to just specify here URL and inside it, I want to specify here an image. So I'm going to specify this image here. So I'm going to specify the root path of the application. To specify it, specify double dot forward slash. So this refers to the root directory. And in the root directory, I have asset folder. So I'm going to select it and then select the background image. I have this background image. So I'm going to select this background image here. So I'm going to select it. And just after that, I'm going to specify background size, cover, and then specify some height. So I'm going to specify height here. 110 viewport height once i save it you can see i have this beautiful background image to my website now just after that i want to center this text to do that i'm going to specify here display property so i'm going to say display flex and i want to center this horizontally so i'm going to say here justify content center when i save these changes you can see I have all my text at the center of this document. Now just after that, I'm going to select this side background class. And to select it, I'm going to first select the main tag and then select site title and then select site background. Now to this site background, I want to first add space to this text. So I'm going to specify padding, top. And I want to add here 10 rem padding to this text. So when I save it, you can see I have some padding to this text. Now once I have this padding, I, I'm going to align this center. So I'm going to say here is text align center. And I want to specify color. So I'm going to specify color white. I'm going to use here a variable. Save the changes. Now as you can see here, I have my text here with the white color. Now just after that, I'm going to select my main tag, then select the site title class and then select h1 and h3 heading tag and I want to specify margin to it. So I'm going to specify margin 0.3 rem. So this will specify top, right, left and bottom margin. When I save the changes, Right? So this will specify 0.3 margin to this h1 and to this h3 text. Now just out of that, I'm going to select my main tag, then select site title and then select btn class. Now as you know, we have this btn class to this button. So I'm going to select the btn class and just specify here margin and I want to specify 1.8 rem margin to this button. When I save it, you can see I have some margin to it. Just after that, I'm going to specify background. I'm going to specify background color to it. And I want to specify gradient color to this button. So I'm going to say here sky. So this is the variable I'm going to specify to this button to specify gradient color. When I save the changes, I have this gradient color to this button. But now as you can see, this text and this button is not look like the finished website like this. 
so instead specifying the font family and some space to it i'm going to specify the global classes to this text so we can use it later in this tutorial so i'm going to just scroll up and open my global section right here in the global section i'm going to add some style now here i'm going to create global styling to this theme so i'm going to simply select the h1 heading tag and specify font family so i'm going to say here font family and i'm going to choose my variable here this one and just after that i want to specify font size to this text so i'm going to just specify font size which is 2.5 rem when i save the changes you can see i have the similar result what we have in this finished website just after that i'm going to select this h3 heading tag so i'm going to select it and i want to specify here font family abel so i'm going to select this font family and specify font size which is 1.3 rem so as you can see here i just specify this global styling to the h1 and h3 heading tag so whenever you use h3 and h1 heading tag you are going to get this default styling now along with that i also want to specify some style to h2 heading tag so i'm going to get the default styling to the h2 heading tag also so i'm going to specify font family save the changes this will not do anything but this is the best practice to specify default styling to your template whenever you create your own css now as you can see i need to specify some style to this button as well so in the global section i'm going to first select button and select a class btn now whenever i specify this class to my any button i'm going to apply this css properties to that button so this is the default styling to this button now in this button class i'm going to specify border none border radius 2 rem padding i'm going to specify one ram for the top and bottom and three ram for the left and right when i save it you can see we have this button here and i want to specify font size one ram and font family is going to be this and the last property i want to change the cursor when i hover on this button so i'm going to say here cursor pointer when I save the changes, you can see I'm going to just change my cursor when I hover on this button. Now, just after that, I want to create hover effect on this button. So I'm not going to do that in this global section. Instead, I'm going to do it in the site title section. So I just specify this global styling to my all buttons. So whenever I use button with this BTN class, I'm going to have this default styling to the button. Now, in the site title section, right here, I'm going to create hover effect this button so i'm going to select main tag then select the site title and then select the btn class and to this btn when i hover on it i want to specify some style so i'm going to specify here background transparent then specify border one pixel solid white when i save it and when i hover on it you can see this type of result now the last thing i need to change this text I'm going to just say color and just change it to white right save the changes and as you can see here i have this type of result here now it's very easy to create this site title isn't it now the next section we are going to create this beautiful carousel with this carousel navigation we're also going to add this background image we are going to create these cards with this image these buttons and we're also going to add this beautiful background image so let's see how to do it as you can see i have this beautiful carousel so i can navigate to my different slides and also you can see i have this background image and i have this beautiful three cards now i want to navigate to my next card i'm going to click on this navigation link of this carousel like this so i'm going to navigate to my next carousel so to add this functionality and to create this carousel i'm going to use old carousel library to create this beautiful carousel, you just need to add oval carousel in this project. So I'm going to just open a new tab and search for oval carousel. Now, once you search it, you can see you have the home page of this oval carousel. Just click on it. And as you can see here, you have your oval carousel library. Now, 
To use this library, make sure you link jQuery to your index.html file because this library is using jQuery to create carousel. If you are follow along with me, we already done that. So we don't need to link jQuery again. Now, as you can see here, I have this download button. So I'm going to download this library and use it in the project. So I'm going to click on this download button. I already downloaded this library. So I'm going to just open it. But before I open this library, let me just show you the demo of this library. So if you just click on these demos, you can see you have different carousel sliders. You can create different carousels with this library. But for now, we are going to create a basic responsive slider. So I'm going to just create this basic responsive slider and just change this navigation links and remove these dots. You can also drag these items if you want. So this is the benefit of using this oval carousel. Now let's open the oval carousel zip file which you have downloaded. So your downloaded file something look like this. You just need to now extract it. So just need to right click here and say extract here. So once you extract this oval carousel library, just open it and you just need to open the dixt folder and in this dixt folder as you can see here you have the css files now you just need to link the oval carousel css file or you can use this minified version as well so i'm going to use this oval carousel dot mean file and also i'm going to link this oval theme default dot mean file so using this file we are going to specify the default theme to the carousel so i'm going to link these two files so I'm going to just copy these two files. I'm going to just press Ctrl C to copy this file and paste it inside the root directory inside the CSS folder. So as you can see here in the root directory of my project, I'm going to just copy and paste that files in the CSS folder right here. So I'm going to just paste it here. Once I have this old carousel and this theme file, I'm going to just open the old carousel folder and in this folder, in the text folder, you can see you have the JavaScript files. You also need to link this JavaScript file to interact with your carousel, right? So I'm going to just copy this oval carousel and paste it inside the root directory inside this JS folder right here. And I'm going to paste it that file here. Now, the next thing you need to link that file to your index.html so we can use it in the project. So I'm going to just open my website and let me just expand this window and in the index.html file right here on the top before the custom styling right here i'm going to just link this oval carousel so i'm going to first create a comment and i'm going to specify here oval carousel and i'm going to link this oval carousel css file using link tag and in the href attribute, I'm going to first specify the root directory of, of the project. Then select the CSS folder and then select oval carousel main.css file. And just after that, I'm going to link the oval theme as well. So I'm going to just call the link tag. And in the href attribute, I'm going to select the CSS folder and then select this oval theme default main.css file. I'm going to use here a minified version of this file. If you want, you can use the development version as well. Now just save the changes and now don't forget to link the JavaScript file of the old carousel because without it, you can't interact with your carousel. So I'm going to just copy this command because I'm going to use it down here. So just after this jQuery file, make sure you need to put this JavaScript file just after this jQuery because old carousel will use the jQuery to create carousels. So just after this jQuery, I'm going to create a comment over carousel and name it something over carousel JS. And just after that, right here, I'm going to create script tag with the source attribute. And in the source, I'm going to first specify the JS folder and then select this over carousel main.js file. Save the changes. And now I can create this beautiful carousel. Now, to create this beautiful carousel, I'm going to just open the main section of this website. And in this main section, I'm going to first create a command and name it blog carousel. And I'm going to just close this command. Now, in this command block, I'm going to create my second section. So, I'm going to create here a section tag. And in this section tag, I'm going to create a division tag with the class block. Now, in this block, 
I'm going to have a simple container. So I'm going to create a division tag with the class container. Now in this container, I'm going to have oval container. The oval container will contain all the oval items. So we're going to put all the oval items inside this oval container, right? So I'm going to just create here a division tag with the class oval carousel. Just after that, I also want to add here oval carousel theme. So I'm going to just add here oval theme. Along with that, I also want to add my custom class to this division tag. So I'm going to add here block post. When I press tab, I'm going to have a division tag with three classes. So I'm going to create here a class oval carousel. So this is a container of different oval items. Then I'm going to specify oval theme. So this is used to specify default styling to the oval carousel. And this is the blog post. So this is the custom styling for this division tag. So I'm going to create this blog post in the style.css file. Now in this table, as I said, this is the container of all carousel. Now I want to create these carousel items. So I have here four carousel items. So I'm going to create a division tag and I want to specify a class to this div and I'm going to name it blog content. If you want, you can specify any class name to this div, right? As you can see here, this is my first carousel item. To create your second carousel item, just duplicate this line, right? But we are not going to do that because once we complete this div, I'm going to duplicate it. So first in this div, I'm going to add img tag with the source attribute. And to this source, I want to specify my image. So I'm going to select asset folder, select the blog post folder, and I'm going to select my first image here. So I'm going to select here post one, this image. And in the alt attribute, I'm going to name post one. Now, just after this image, I'm going to create here a division tag and specify block title. In this div, I'm going to create this title, this fashion button and this text. In this div, I'm going to just create h3 heading tag and specify some text here. So I'm going to just say here, London fashion week continued evolution and just save the changes. And now just after that, just after this h3 heading tag, I'm going to just create here button and I want to add the default class to this button which is btn. So as you know, we already specified default styling to this btn class and I'm going to specify here a text which is fashion. Along with that, I want to add a custom styling to this button. So I'm going to specify here btn block. Just after that, just after this button, I'm going to add a span tag and specify here a text two minutes so i'm going to just open the style.css file and just toggle this window on the right side like this and just create a comment here to indicate this is the second section so i'm going to just create here a command blog carousel and just close this command so i'm going to copy it paste it down here now to style this block section i'm going to first select this block class so i'm going to just open my style.css file and inside it, I'm going to first select the main tag and select the block class. Now, in this block class, I'm going to first specify this background image. So I'm going to just specify here background and in the URL, I'm going to specify the image. So I'm going to just specify the root path. So I'm going to just select the asset folder and inside this asset folder, I'm going to select this abstract file, abstract 0.1 PNG file. I'm going to specify background repeat, no repeat and just after that I'm going to specify background position, right and I want to add some height and width to this block. So I'm going to specify here height, 100, viewport height and I'm going to specify width which is 100%. Save the changes and when you save it, you can see you have your block section here. But where is your content? where the content is gone if you open your index file you know that we have this content inside this block class but where is the content now now just open the standard css and just save it again when you save this file you can see you have your content here for just a few seconds now when i save this file right so as you can see here you have your content only for a few seconds and the content will disappear after a few seconds 
This will happen because you specify here in the index.html file, you initialize this div as oval carousel, but you have not called the oval carousel function. So we need to first call the oval carousel function and then you are going to get your content here. So I'm going to just open the main.js file and inside this file, right here, I'm going to create a command and in this command, I'm going to say oval carousel for block. And just after that, right here, to initialize all carousel, you just need to call the jQuery object and just specify the class name. So as you know, we specify this container with the class all carousel. So I'm going to just copy it and specify this in the single quote. Don't forget to specify dot here. Now, once you select your division tag using this class, you need to initialize this is the all carousel. So you need to call here oval carousel. I just specify parenthesis and when I save this main.js file, you can see I have my content here as simple as that. Now just after that, just open the style.css and right here. So I'm going to just add some padding to this content. So I'm going to just first select the main tag and then select the blog and then select blog post this class, this one. Now, once I select this class, I'm going to specify some padding to this class. So I'm going to specify padding top and I want to add here six rem padding. So I'm going to just say here is six rem. So this will specify top padding to this content. Just after this blog post, I'm going to select the blog content to select it. Just call the main tag, select the blog post and then select blog content. Now I'm going to just specify here display flex. Then specify flex direction column because I want to align all this block content in the new line. Then I'm going to just specify text align the center and I want to specify width 80%. So I'm going to just specify width 80%. And just after that, I'm going to just specify here margin. I want to add 3 rem to the top and bottom and 2 rem to the left and right. Just after that, I just wanted to add some box shadow to this block content. So I'm going to specify some box shadow to it. So I'm going to specify 0, 15 pixel, 20 pixel, and I'm going to specify RGB A color here. So I'm going to choose a simple gray color here, light gray. And the alpha is going to be 0 0.2. Save the changes. Just after this block content, I'm going to select block title. So I'm going to first select main tag, the block content tag, and I'm going to select block title. Now inside this block title, I'm going to have this title, this button and this man tag. So I'm going to specify here some padding to it. So I'm going to specify padding to rem to the top and bottom and zero for the left and right. Now just after that, I just want to style this button. So to select this button, I'm going to select the main tag and just select the block content and then btn block class. So I'm going to select it and specify padding 0.7 to the top and bottom and 2 rem for the left and right. And now just after that, I'm going to specify background and I want to specify gradient background to this, to this button. So I'm going to specify this sky gradient color and then specify some margin. So I'm going to specify margin 0.5 rem. When I save it, I have this type of result. Now just after that, I'm going to just specify some style to the span tag and make them a block level content. So to make this span as a block level content and add this span in the next line, I'm going to add here a main tag, select the block content and just specify here a span. Now to this pawn, I'm going to specify display block. When I save it, I have this pawn in the next line. I just specify display block to this pawn. Now I just want to specify some font family to this pawn. So I'm going to do that in the global section. So I'm going to do it right here. In the global section, I'm going to specify spawn tag. So I'm going to specify font family. When I save it, I have this font family to my spawn tag. Now this is your first carousel item. I want to make three more. 
Now I'm going to create here four carousel items. If you want, you can create more than that. So let's create three more carousels. So I'm going to just open the index.html file and inside it, you don't need to write any code now. Instead, you just need to copy this division tag, this block content division tag, because this is your first carousel item. So I'm going to just minimize it, select it and just press Alt Shift down. When you press it, you can see you have your second carousel item. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to press Alt Shift down again to create my fourth carousel item. When you expand this, you can see here you have your four carousel items. Now I'll just save it. And as you can see here, you have your three carousel items here. Now, what I want, I want to change this image. So I'm going to change it. So I'm going to change this image to post3.jpg. The third image is going to be post2.jpg. And to the last carousel, I'm going to specify post5, right? You are not limited to only choose these images. You are free to choose any image here. Save the changes. And now you can see you have different images. Now, as you can see, I have four carousel items here. So if you want, you can create more than that. Now, just after that, as you can see here, this carousel is not look like we have here. So as you can see here, I have this container class, which we haven't created yet. So I'm going to just create that in the style.css file in the global section right here, just after this pawn tag, I'm going to just create a container class and specify some margin. So I'm going to specify here margin zero for the top and bottom. And to the left and right, I'm going to specify five viewport width. When I save the changes, as you can see here, I have some space to these cards, right? So as you can see, I have this gradient on the bottom left corner of this card. In my website, I have this gradient here. I want to align this gradient on the bottom left corner to this card. So to do that, I'm going to just specify here to this block class in the block carousel. I'm going to just specify here background size, which is 65%. When I save it, you can see here, I have this gradient here, right? Like this. Now, just after that, I want to specify auto scroll after every three seconds to this carousel, as well as I want to remove these dots. So I'm going to do that in the main.js file. So I'm going to open it. And in this main.js file, as you know, we initialize this carousel. And in this parenthesis, we just need to call an object and specify different parameters. So I'm going to just specify here first argument, which is loop. And I'm going to say here true. I just wanted to add here autoplay true. And after every three seconds, I want to scroll this slide automatically. So I'm going to say here, auto play timeout after every three seconds. So I'm going to specify 3000 here. When I save it, I don't have to scroll this carousel. It will automatically scroll itself, right? Now, just after that, I want to remove these dots. I'm going to just specify here, dots false. When I do that, I don't have these dots here. And as you can see, I have this old navigation on the top. So I'm going to just enable it. So to enable this navigation, you just need to call here nav true. When you save the changes, you can see you have here a nav, right? I hope you see this now because it's really small. Now, as you can see, the carousel is automatically scroll after every three seconds. And here you have your oval navigation. Now, I just wanted to change this oval navigation to these icons. To do that, I'm going to just open my index.html file and just after this closing div, just after this oval carousel container closing div, I'm going to just create here another div and specify a class oval navigation. Just after that, in this oval navigation, I'm going to create a spawn tag with the class oval now previous. So this is my previous oval navigation. Now in this spawn tag, I'm going to add this left arrow. So I'm going to just add that using font or some website. So as you know, I'm going to add this icon using i tag. So I'm going to add the i tag here and specify a class 
fast if a long arrow out left right when i save it you can see i have this icon here now just after that i'm going to just duplicate this line and change this icon to right don't forget to change this class as well and i'm going to name it over now next save the changes and now you just need to indicate the old carousel to use these icons instead using this default so to do that you just need to open the main.js file and here you just need to specify now text property and to this property you need to specify the navigation links you need to specify that in the array so i'm going to just add the bracket here and in this array i'm going to first specify my first span tag this one so to do that i'm going to first select this oval navigation and then select this oval now previous span tag so i'm going to just open main.js file and i'm going to select it using jquery object because it's very easy to select any tag using jquery so i'm going to call jquery object and in this single quote i'm going to call oval navigation and call oval now previous specify comma here and specify the second oval navigation so i'm going to just copy this text like this and just specify right here and just change this class save the changes and now you can see you have your custom oval navigation now you can navigate through different slides using this oval navigation now just after that i just want to specify some style to it so I'm going to just open the style.css file and toggle the style on the right side like this and space up some style to this oval navigation. So I'm going to just specify that style down here in the block carousel right here. Now to style this navigation, I'm going to just first select this section tag and select the container. And just after that, I'm going to have here oval nav class to style this navigation you have access to this oval now if you initialize this property nav true we already done that so i can use this class for now let me just specify autoplay false we will enable it once we complete this website but just for now i will just specify here autoplay false and just after that in the css file i'm going to just specify here position to this navigation so i'm going to say position absolute i want to specify this navigation on the top at the center so i'm going to specify position top zero so i'm going to just say top zero percent so you can see you have this nav here then i just want to specify margin zero to the top and bottom and i'm going to say auto here to center this navigation i want to specify width to this oval now i'm going to specify width 100 percent i have this navigation at the center of this document horizontally and i save it i have this navigation right here now i just want to remove this hover effect this background color and want to increase the size of this icon so i'm going to do that quickly so i'm going to just first select the oval now then select oval previous and then select my custom oval now previous class just after that i'm going to copy the selectors paste it down here and just change this oval previous to oval next and this became oval now next and to these classes i'm going to specify color and i want to specify text gray color i'm going to just specify background transparent and i want to specify font size going to be 2 ram i have this navigation but i still have this hot effect on this navigation so i'm going to just remove it so i'm going to first select the oval theme so just need to say here oval theme then select the oval nav and then you want to just select a class so you just need to select a class which has oval class so i'm going to just say here class asterisk is equal to oval so I'm going to just say here, any class which has a class starting with oval, I want to select it 
I want to specify the hover effect on it. And to this hover effect, I want to specify background, transparent, and color is going to be text gray. So the changes, you can see, you don't have this background color. If you want, you can change the color when you hover on it as well. So if I just change this color, and I'm gonna say here, midnight, you can see I have this midnight color to these navigations. Now I can navigate to my different slides, right? But still, as you can see here, I have this border, this outline. To remove this outline, you just need to say here, you just need to first select this selector and specify outline none. When you save it, you don't have this outline to this navigation, right? Now you can navigate to your different slides. As simple as that. Now, once we know that how to create this beautiful carousel slider, let's move on to the next section. And in this section, we are going to create this beautiful blog post. So I'm going to create this beautiful layout using grid system. So let's see how to create this beautiful blog post with this sidebar. So I'm going to just create this blog post and sidebar in the index.html. So I'm going to just open index.html file. I'm going to create a comment here and just name this command site content because all my content goes here. I'm going to just copy this command and paste it down here and just specify this is the closing site content. Now in this command, I'm going to create my new section. So I'm going to start with the section tag and specify a class container. Now in this section, I'm going to create here a simple division tag with the class site content. So I'm going to say site content and in this site content i'm going to have a different blog post so i'm going to create a div with the class post and in this div i'm going to have my different blog post but for now i'm going to just add here h1 heading tag and specify blog posts and just after that i also want to add this sidebar to my layout as you can see here this one so to create this sidebar I'm going to add here a side tag and I'm going to specify a class to it sidebar. Now inside this aside tag, I'm going to just add h1 heading tag for now and specify sidebar text. When I save it and open my website, you can see I have here blog post and the sidebar. I just want to specify display grid to this layout and I want to specify 70% width to this blog post and 30% width to this sidebar. So I'm going to do that in the style.css file. So I'm going to just open the style.css and in this style.css file, I'm going to create here a command just out of this block carousel. I'm going to add a comment here and just specify site content and just close this command. Now in this site content, I'm going to first select the site content class. So I'm going to first select the main tag and then select site content. Now. Once I select this site content class, this one, I'm going to specify display grid. Now I just want to specify the site content as a grid column. So I'm going to specify display grid and then specify here grid template columns. And I want to create here two columns. So I'm going to specify 70% width to this blog post and 30% width to this sidebar. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to first say here. 70% so this will create first column with 70% width right and then I'm going to specify 30% so this will create my second column in the same row with 30% width when I save it I have my sidebar in the same row now I have 70% width to this blog post and 30% width to my sidebar now just after that I'm going to just create this beautiful blog post in this blog post section so I'm going to just maximize this window and in the index.html file, I'm going to just get rid of this h1 heading tag and create my first blog post. So I'm going to first create here a division tag with the class post content. Now in this post content, I'm going to have my first blog post. Now inside this div, I'm going to create another div with the class post image. And inside this div, I'm going to have this beautiful image. 
along with that i'm also going to have this post information and in this post information i have the admin the publish date of this post and then i'm going to display the comments so to create it i'm going to first create here a division tag and inside it i'm going to put img tag and to the source attribute i'm going to specify my asset folder then select blog post and then i'm going to select my first blog image and in the alt attribute i'm going to say blog one now just after that just after this div i'm going to just create here another div and specify a class post info and inside this div i'm going to just create spawn tag and i want to add this user icon so i'm going to just add that right here so i'm going to just add i tag with the class pass fa user and when i press tab i'm going to have the user on my website whoops i think i forgot to specify r here user right save the changes now you can see here i have this user icon right now just after that i'm going to just copy this spawn tag and create another spawn tag down here and just change this user icon to calendar so i'm going to change this user icon to calendar alt so i'm going to say here calendar alt when i save it i'm going to have here a calendar icon right and just after that i'm going to create a spawn tag again but at this time i'm not going to add any icon instead i'm going to put a simple text so i'm going to just put two comments save the changes i want to put all these three elements in the same row i want to specify flex wrap property to this container so i'm going to just specify here to this post info i'm going to specify flex row class you know that what we have inside this row class and uh, just after that i want to specify text gray to these icons so instead selecting these icons and specifying style to it i'm going to just specify here a class text gray and i'm going to specify this class here as well so i'm going to say here text gray and save the changes now at this point this class will not do anything but when i open my style sheet and specify color to it you're going to have that color to these icons now if you take a look at this spawn tag you're going to have a simple icons but in the main website we have some text here so to add this text i'm going to first specify here to the first spawn tag i'm going to specify admin and here you can see you have your admin now let me just add some space to the bottom so i'm going to just open style.css and i'm going to just specify some space i'm going to just specify main tag and specify margin bottom 5 rem and as you can see here i have some space right here so we'll see what we are doing right now i want to add some space between this icon and this text so i'm going to just use a simple non-breaking space here to add non-breaking space you specify and person and say n b s p so this is the non-breaking space now i'm going to add it again because i want to add two spaces here don't forget to specify semicolon at the end of this n b s p the short form of non-breaking space and when you save it you're going to have a space between your icon and your text now i'm going to specify some text to this second spawn tag as well so right here just after this i tag i'm going to just specify this this spaces like this and i want to add here a date so i'm going to just say here january 14 2019 save the changes and as you can see here i have this date here now just after that as you can see in my finished website i have this title this paragraph and a button to create this beautiful title paragraph and button i'm going to just open my index.html file and just after this blog post division tag right here i'm going to create another division tag with the class post title and in this division tag i'm going to create a title for this post so i'm going to put this title in the anchor tag and i'm going to specify here hash and just specify a text here so i'm going to just specify here why should boys have all the fun it's it's the women who are making india an alcohol loving country don't take this title seriously because this is just a demo text and then i'm going to add here a paragraph and i want to add a demo text here so i'm not going to write it instead i'm going to use lorem here 
Using Lawyer, you can add demo text in your website. So I'm going to show you how. You just need to type here Lawyer and just specify how many words you want to put in this paragraph. So I just want 40 words in this paragraph. So I'm going to specify 40 and press tab. So as you can see, I have here 40 words inside this paragraph. Now, just after this paragraph, I want to add here BTN class to this button and some custom class. So I'm going to say here post BTN. So using post BTN, I'm going to specify different style to this button. Then I'm going to specify here a text to this button. So I'm going to say read more and I want to add some space here. So I'm going to use non-breaking space and then specify here an icon. So I'm going to specify I and I want to add here flat arrow. So I'm going to say here fast if a arrow and I want to add here right arrow. Now when I press tab, I'm going to have right arrow just after this read more text. Save the changes and as you can see here, I have this button with read more text and this icon. Now as you know, we already specify styling to this BTN class. So that is why I have this default styling to this button. What we need to do is we need to specify style to this blog post and make them attractive like this. Now if you wanted to specify style to it, you need to open this style.css file. So I'm going to open it, toggle this window on the right side and I'm going to first specify this text gray class. So I just want to specify some style to this text gray class. So this is a global class. So I'm going to just specify it in the style.css file in the global section up here. I'm going to just create here text gray and to this class, I'm going to specify color. I'm going to specify text gray variable and save the changes. When I save it, you can see I have this text gray color to these icons. Now just after that, I'm going to just back to my site content. So here is my site content blog and inside it, I'm going to style this beautiful blog post. Now to style this section, I'm going to first decrease the window size. I'm going to first specify 100% width to this post content. So I'm going to say here width 100%. And just after that, down here, I'm going to first select the main tag. Then select the site content. And then I want to, I want to select the post content. And just after this post content, I want to select the descendant division tag. So to select this, I'm going to use here greater than operator. And the descendant div of this post content, I want to select is post image. And I also want to use here post title. I'm going to just select post image and post title class element. And I want to specify padding to it. So I'm going to specify padding. One RAM to the top and bottom. And two RAM for the left and right. Then I just want to specify position relative. Save the changes. I just specify some space between this image and this post title. Now just after that, I'm going to select this post info. So I'm going to select the main tag, site title class, post content. And then I want to select here post image. And the last, I'm going to select post info class. Now to this post info class, I just want to specify here background sky, which is the gradient color. Then I'm going to specify padding, one RAM to the top and bottom and one RAM to the left and right. So instead of using this, I'm going to just specify one RAM here. So this will specify top right, bottom left padding. Now, as you can see, I just specify this gradient color to this post info. Now what I want, I want to specify here absolute position to this post info and want to add this post info right here. So I'm going to specify here position absolute then specify bottom 0% and left is going to be 20 viewport width. When I save it, I have this post info at the center of this image. Just after that, I'm going to specify border radius to this post info and I'm going to say here 3 RAM. So when I save it, I have this border radius to this post info. Now just after that, I'm going to select all the division tag inside this post image. So I'm going to just say here main site content and then select the descendant post image. And inside this post image, I want to select all the descendant division tag 
and I'm gonna specify here overflow hidden just after that I'm gonna select the main tag again then select the site content and then select post content class and I want to select the descendant post image class and just after that I want to select this image so to select this image I'm going to use img class so as you know we don't have this img class to this image so I'm going to specify that quickly so I'm going to just specify here to this image I'm going to specify a class img I just save the changes now just after that to this image I'm going to just specify width which is 100% and I'm going to just select the post image class again so I'm going to just say here main site content then select the post content and then select the descendant post image and to this post image I want to create an hover effect on this image so I'm going to select img tag and create an hover effect now to create an hover effect I just need to select this image and specify hover effect to it and I'm going to specify here transform scale and I want to increase the size of this image by 1.3 when I save the changes and hover on this image you're going to get this type of result now as you can see here you have this overflow content as well I don't have this post image descended div inside this post content so I just wanted to correct this selector so I'm going to just specify here post content and inside this post content I have this post image right so when I save it you are going to get this type of result so you're not going to see this overflow content here I just want to specify slowly zoom in and zoom out effect to this image so to do that to this image I'm going to simply specify transition property so I'm going to specify transition of one second is when I save the changes and hover on this image I'm going to get this beautiful transition now let's move on and style this post title section so I'm going to just open the style.css file and down here I'm going to just style this post title but before I style it I want to add some space between this comment and this and this date so I'm going to just first select this pawn tag so I'm going to simply say here main tag then select the site content then select the post content class and inside it I have post image class and inside this class I have post info class and I'm going to select a spawn tag and to this spawn tag I'm going to specify margin 0 and 0.5 rem so this will specify left and right padding to this command when I save it you can see here I have some space to this command now just after that let's style this post title I'm going to first select the main tag then select the post content and we have here post title class and to this class so I'm going to select the anchor tag like this and specify font family and tone so I'm going to use here a variable oops I just need to close this I don't want to update this Visual Studio code right now and now I'm going to just specify font size is going to be 1.5 rem say the changes this will increase the size of this anchor tag like this and specify the font family now just after that I'm going to just select this built-in class so I'm going to just select here site content you can select the main tag as well but I'm going to just start with the site content class so I'm going to use site content post content and post title and inside this post title I'm going to have post btn and inside it I want to remove this border radius so I'm going to say border radius 0 and padding is going to be 0.7 RAM to the top and bottom and 1.5 RAM to the left and right then I want to add a background color so I'm gonna say here background sky say the changes and as you can see here I have this beautiful button here right now I just want to style this paragraph so I'm not gonna specify any styling in this site content instead I'm gonna use a global styling to this paragraph so whenever I use paragraph I want to apply the global style 
So I'm going to just open my global styling. Right here, inside this global styling, I'm going to select my paragraph. And to this paragraph, I'm going to specify font family. And I'm going to specify this font. And I'm going to specify here color, text, light. Save the changes. And as you can see here, I'll just specify some text light color to this paragraph and have a font family. Now, as you can see, my first post is ready. Like I have in my finished website. Now let's move on and create the rest of this post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this first post and change the data. So I'm going to just open the index.html file. And as you can see here, I have here a simple horizontal row. So I'm going to just first add this horizontal row here. So to create this horizontal row, I'm going to just use HR tag. So just after this division tag, just after my first division tag, right here, I'm going to just add hr tag. So this tag will add this horizontal row. When I save it, you can see I have my horizontal row. But now I just want to remove this margin, which we had specified to this post content. So I'm going to remove this margin. Now just after that, I want to create my second post with this beautiful doggy image. And I want to add here a similar text. I'm going to just open the index.html file and inside it, I'm going to just minimize this post content and just copy it. So I'm going to just copy it from this horizontal row. I'm going to select it and just press Alt Shift down. So this will duplicate this first post. So I'm going to minimize it and open my second post and change this image. So I'm going to change it to the blog one to blog post two when i save it i have my second blog post here with this doggy image and i also want to change this date and this comments so i'm going to just change it to january 16 and i have here seven comments save the changes so as you can see i have my second blog post ready now I'm going to just create my next blog post. So I'm going to just add this image. And as you can see here, I have different text here. So I'm going to just copy my second blog post. So I'm going to first minimize the second blog post and just select it and press Alt Shift down. So when I press Alt Shift down, I'm going to have my third blog post here. Now I'm going to expand it and just specify here blog png save the changes and as you can see i have my third blog post here All right now i'm going to just change this text and i want to add here this text so i'm going to copy this text and paste it here and now you can see i have this text here i'm also going to change this january 19 and five comments so i'm going to just see here january 19 and i have five comment on this post so I'm going to save it and as you can see here, I have here January 19, 5 comments and I have the different text here. And just after that, I'm going to create my last post. So I'm going to just copy my third post right from here. So I'm going to just select it and press Alt Shift down and just minimize my third post and maximize fourth post. Just after that, I'm going to change this image to block 4. So as you can see, I have my fourth post here now i just want to change this date to 21 and i have 12 comments on this post so i'm going to change it to 21 and i have 12 comments on this post when i save it you can see i have my last post with the publish date 21 january and i have 12 comment on this post now just after that, at the last post, I don't want to add this horizontal row. So I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to first minimize this fourth post and remove this horizontal row. Right? Now as you can see here, the blog post is ready. Now the next thing we need to create, I'm going to have here pagination. Now to create this pagination, I'm going to first open my site content class. And inside it, I'm going to have my post. I'm going to just have here, just after my last post, I'm going to create here another div with the class pagination. And inside this pagination, 
I'm going to have my page numbers. So I'm going to first add here anchor tag. And to this anchor tag, I'm going to add an icon. So I'm going to just add this icon here. So I'm going to just say here I tag and add an icon class. I have this icon right here. Now just after that, I'm going to just copy this anchor tag and duplicate it. And just change this left to right. So as you can see, I have this left and right icon down here. And now I just wanted to add my pages. So I'm going to add anchor tag and just specify here first page, duplicate it, specify my second page, duplicate it and specify my third page, right? Save the changes. As you can see here, I have my first, second and third page. Now, just after that, I just want to style this pagination so i'm going to open style.css file and inside it i'm going to style it so in the style.css file right here in the site content i'm going to select this pagination so i'm going to first select the the site content class and inside it i have pagination class and to this pagination i'm going to specify justify content center but before i specify this property i need to initialize this pagination as a flex container so to do so to do that i'm going to just specify here in the index.html file i'm going to just specify here flex row class just after that i'm going to save the changes and open the style.css i'm going to specify here color text gray and margin is going to be 4m to the top and bottom and 0 for the left and right save the changes and you can see here I have my pagination at the center because I just use here justify content center. Now just after that, I'm going to select this anchor tags. So to select it, I'm going to first select the site content, then select the pagination and then select the anchor tag. And to this anchor tag, I'm going to specify padding 0.6 frame to the top and bottom 0.9 rem to the left and right. Then I'm going to specify border radius 2 rem and margin. It's going to be 0 for the top and bottom and 0.3 for the left and right. Just after that, I'm going to specify font family, which is this. When I save the changes, you can see here, I just specify some margin to this element and have a font family. Now, just after that, I just wanted to specify this background color to these pages. So, I'm going to first specify class to it. So, to these pages, I'm going to specify class, pages. I'm going to copy this class and specify to my second page and specify to my third page. Oops, I think I forgot the C here like this. Save the changes and just after that, open the standard CSS file and I'm going to first select the site content then select the pagination and I'm going to select the page class. And to this page class, I want to specify background color text gray and color is going to be white when I save the changes I'm going to have here a simple background color to my pages oops I think I forgot something page yeah here pages I just need to change here page to pages save the changes as you can see I have a background color to my pages right now, as you can see, my first to create column is ready. Now, let's move on to the next column. And in this column, I'm going to have this simple sidebar. And in this sidebar, I'm going to first create this category. Then I'm going to create this popular post. And then I'm going to have here newsletter and the popular tags. Now, let's see how to create this beautiful sidebar. So, I'm going to just open my website. And as you know, I have a grid column here for the sidebar. And I'm going to just open my index.html file and inside it, I have my sidebar section. So instead of using this h1 heading tag, I'm going to create first this category section. So to create this category section, I'm going to first add the division tag with the class category. And to this category, I'm going to first create h2 heading tag with the class category. And just after this h2 heading tag, I'm going to have url tag with the class category list and inside this ul tag i'm going to create my li tag and specify class list 
items. And inside this LA tag, I'm going to have my anchor tag. I'm going to first specify my category. So the first category is software. So I'm going to say here software and save the changes. And when I save it, you can see I have this category. Now I'm going to create my second, third, fourth and fifth category. Now I just want to create this number. So I'm going to just open my index.html file and just after this anchor tag, I'm going to create a span tag and specify here a number. So I'm going to first specify 0.5. Save the changes. And now as you can see, I have this number here. Now I'm going to just create here category items. So I'm going to just copy this li tag and just duplicate it. So I'm going to press Alt Shift down. So this will duplicate this li tag. And I'm going to create my second category, which is technology. Then I'm going to change this number to, and the third category is going to be lifestyle. And the fourth is going to be shopping. And the last I'm going to create here is the food. So I'm going to say here food. I also want to change this number. So I'm going to change it here. Seven. I'm going to change it to one and change this font eight. Save the changes. And now you can see I have my categories. Now, I just want to specify some style to this category and make this category attractive. So I'm going to just open my style.css file and just toggle this window on the left side. And just after that, just after the side content in this main content right here, I'm going to create a comment and I'm going to specify here sidebar like this. Just copy this comment, paste it down here and just close it. And I'm going to specify styling to my sidebar inside this command. Now to select the sidebar, I'm going to use side content class because inside the side content, I have this sidebar class. So I'm going to select the sidebar. So I'm going to say here sidebar. And once I select it, I'm going to select category list. So I'm going to just say here category list. So I'm going to select this class here, this one, which I specified to this URL tag. Inside to this category list, I'm going to specify font family and specify a font family to this category list. Just after that, I'm going to select site content again. Select the sidebar category list. And just after that, I want to select the list items. So I'm going to say here list items. So I'm going to selecting this list items, right? And to this list item, I want to specify background sky a gradient color then specify padding 0.4 ram to the top and bottom and 1 ram to the left and right margin 0.8 ram for the top and bottom and 0 for the left and right then just after that i'm going to specify border radius 3 ram and width is going to be 70 percent just after that i just want to specify display flex and I just want to specify some space between this number and this text. So I'm going to use here justify content space between. When I save it, you can see I have some space between this number and this text. Now at the last, I want to specify black color to this text. So I'm going to just select here the list item. So I'm going to select the selector, paste it down here and select the anchor tag. And I want to specify color to it. So I'm going to say here color black when i save the changes i have this black color to this text right now as you can see my category section is ready now let's move to the next section and in this section i'm going to have this beautiful blog post i'm going to have my different blog post here with my different image so to create this blog post i'm going to just add here in my index.html file right here just after this category i'm going to create my popular blog post so now to create this popular blog post i'm going to just create here just after this category div i'm going to just create here a division tag with the class popular post and inside this div i'm going to have here h2 heading tag and specify a class popular post save the changes and if you open your website you can see you have here popular post and just after that, I'm going to create here my first popular post. So to create it, I'm going to just add here a division tag with the class post content. Now to create this post, I'm not going to waste your time to creating this post. So instead, 
creating this post i'm going to just copy my post content class this one i'm going to just copy this post content and use it in my sidebar so i'm going to just copy this post and just specify that inside this popular post division tag so i'm going to just paste that right here right so i'm going to have my first post here when i save the changes and open my website i'm going to have my first post now what i want i want to change the style of this post so i'm going to just remove this paragraph and this button from this post so i'm going to just here just remove this paragraph and this button and i want to change this text as well and i'm going to change it to new data recording system to better analyze road accident save the changes and as you can see i have here a simple blog post but now i just want to change this post info as well admin spawn tag from this post info and save it and i save it i have this type of result but still i want to update this post so to update it i'm going to open this style.css file and just paste over some style to it so i'm going to just toggle this window on the left side and space over some style to this popular post now what i want i just want to first select the post content class and change padding i just want to remove this padding and specify front and padding so i'm going to just select here site content then select the sidebar class then select the popular post and just after that i'm going to select post content class and to this post content i want to specify padding 1 rem to the top and bottom and zero for the left and right and just after that i'm going to select site content then select the sidebar and i want to select popular post h2 heading tag and i want to specify padding top 8 rem so i'm going to just specify some padding to this popular post so i'm going to just specify here padding top 8 rem and i save it as you can see i have some padding to the popular post now just after that i'm going to select the post info class this one so i'm going to select it using site content then select sidebar then select the popular post and then select post info and to this post info i want to specify padding which is 0.4 ram to the top and bottom and 0.1 to the left and right then I'm going to specify bottom 0 rem for left 2 rem. Just after that, I want to specify here about the radius 0 rem. Background is going to be white. Now, as you can see, all these classes is not actually applying to this post info. To solve this problem, I'm going to override the default properties. When you order the default property, you just need to call important keyword here just after every property like this when you do that you have styling to your blog post i'm going to just decrease this font size so i'm going to first select the site content then select the sidebar and then select this popular post i'm going to copy it paste it here and when i have the popular post i'm going to select post title and select the anchor tag and i'm going to specify font size to it one rem I save the changes i have my popular post here right now the last thing i just wanted to update this left property and make it 1.5 rem and i just want to update this image so i'm going to just open index.html file and just update this image so i'm going to say here i'm going to just remove this block one and select popular post folder and select my first block one save the changes when I save it, I have different image here, right? Now, just after that, I'm going to create my second, third, my fourth, and fifth popular post. So, to create this popular post, I'm going to just copy this post content. Now, to create my second popular post, I'm going to just select the first popular post and press Alt Shift Down. So, this will duplicate this first popular post. And I'm going to just change this image. And I'm going to say here, I'm blocked to JPG and just save the changes. 
Now, as you can see, if I open my website, I have my second popular post, right? Now, I'm going to just copy the second popular post and duplicate it and just specify here. Just change this image to 3, save the changes, then select the third one, duplicate it and just change the image. And I'm going to change it to block 4. I'm going to copy the popular content tag again, paste it down here and just change this image. And I'm going to change it to blog 5. Save the changes. When I save it, as you can see, I have my 5 popular posts here. Right? As simple as that. The popular post section is now completed. Now let's move on to the next section. And in this section, as you can see, I have a simple newsletter. Now to create this newsletter section, I'm going to just add here just after this closing popular post tag right here. I'm going to just create another div with the class newsletter. And inside this division tag, I'm going to add h2 heading tag and want to specify text news letter say the changes and as you can see in my website i have the newsletter text here and just after that just after this h2 heading tag i'm going to add division tag with the class form element you can name this class anything and i'm going to name it form element and inside this division tag i'm going to have input tag so i'm going to add here input type text and i want to add here class which is input element and I want to specify placeholder to this input tag and I'm going to name it email when I save the changes I have here an input tag with a placeholder email now just out of this input tag I'm going to just create here a button with a class btn and form btn so as you know I already have styling to this btn class and I'm going to specify custom styling using this form btn class. And I want to specify here subscribe. Right? Now once you create this btn subscribe button, don't forget to subscribe this channel. So just press the red subscribe button just down the video. Now once you subscribe to this channel, let's move on and save the changes. As you can see, I have this button here with the default styling. Now I'm going to just specify some styles to this newsletter section. So I'm going to just open my style.css and toggle this window on the left side. Now inside the sidebar, I'm going to just specify some styling to this newsletter section. Now to style this newsletter section, I'm going to first select site content, then select the sidebar and then select news newsletter class. And I'm going to just specify padding top to it. So I'm going to just say here padding top, 3 rem and save the changes. So this will add some padding to this newsletter like this. Just after that, I'm going to select. I'm going to just copy the selector, paste it down here. And I want to select form element div. So I'm going to say here form element. And once you select it, I'm going to specify padding 0.5 rem and 2 rem. When I save the changes, I have padding to this form element tag. I'm going to just select here input element. I'm going to select this input tag to select it. I'm going to just copy this selector, paste it down here and then select input element. And I want to specify here with 80% height is going to be 1.9 rem and padding is going to be 0.3 rem to the top and bottom and 0.5 rem to the left and right. When I save the changes, this will specify some style to this input element. Along with that, I want to specify font family to this input tag and specify font size 1 rem. Save the changes and you can see here, I just have this input element here. And just after that, I'm going to just style this button. So I'm going to just paste the selected again and just specify font btn class. And to this class, I'm going to specify border radius, 
I'm going to remove the border radius from this button and then specify padding 0.8 to the top and bottom. And to make this button responsive, I'm going to use here 32% left and right padding, right? Save the changes. Now, as you can see here, I have 32% left and right padding to this button and 0.8 RAM top and bottom padding. I'm going to specify margin to it. So I'm going to say here margin. 1 RAM to the top and bottom and 0 for the left and right. And the background is going to be the gradient color. So I'm going to specify gradient color to the background of this button. The newsletter section is completed. Now let's move on and create this popular tag section. To create this popular tag section, I'm going to just back to my index.html file and just create that popular tag section just after this newsletter. So I'm going to just minimize it. And down here, I'm going to create my popular tag section. Now, it's very simple to create this popular tags. So just after this newsletter section, I'm going to just create here a division tag with the class popular tags. And inside this div, I'm going to have h2 heading tag with the text popular tags. Save the changes. And as you can see, I have here a text popular tags. And just after that, just after this h2 heading tag, I'm going to create here a division tag with the class tags. And in this div, I'm going to have a span tag. And to this span, I want to specify a class tag and specify here a text. So I'm going to specify here software. So this is my first tag. Then I'm going to duplicate the span tags. So I'm going to press Alt Shift down to duplicate these lines. And just change the tags. So I'm going to change it to technology, change this software to travel, change this tag to illustration, change this software to design, change this software tag to lifestyle. And this became love. And the last is going to be the project. Save the changes. And as you can see, you have this type of result. Now just after that, I'm going to specify flex row to this span tag. So I'm going to specify this class flex row. And just after that, I want to style this span tag. So I'm going to open style.css. Inside it, right here, I'm going to style this popular tags. Now before I specify any style to this popular tag, I'm going to add some top padding to this newsletter. So I'm going to just specify here to this newsletter. I'm going to specify Padding top, then RAM. And just after that, so to style this popular tags, I'm going to just create here. I'm going to first select the side content class and then select the sidebar. And I'm going to select the popular tags. And I want to add padding top to this popular tags. So I'm going to specify padding top to the top and bottom. I'm going to specify 4 RAM and 0 for the left and right. Save the changes. So this will add some top and bottom padding to this popular tags. Oops, I think I've missed something here. Yeah, here the spelling, I think the popular tags, I misspelled this class here. I used to do this type of mistake. So I'm going to just solve this problem and in the style.css. So as you can see, I have some space here, right? Just after that, I just want to increase the space to 5 RAM. Now, just after that, I'm going to just select this popular tags again. So I'm going to just copy this selector, paste it down here. And I want to select, I want to select tags and select the tag class. Inside this tag class, I'm going to specify background image. I'm going to specify background sky. So I'm going to specify this background gradient color to this tags, right? And just after that, I'm going to specify here padding 0.4 to the top and bottom and one for the left and right. Save the changes. As you can see here, I have my tags and I'm going to specify here border radius 3 RAM and I want to add margin to these tags. So I'm going to specify margin 0.4 RAM to the top and bottom and 0.6 RAM to the left and right. So the changes, you have your popular tags here, right? As simple as that.
I just specify the gradient color to the background of these tags. Then specify some margin and just specify border radius property. If you want, you can increase this height as well. And now you can see your sidebar is now ready. Right? Now the sidebar is completely ready now. Now as you can see the 80% work is done. Now the next thing I'm gonna add here a simple footer. So in the next lecture we will understand how to create this beautiful footer as well as we're gonna understand how to create this button to scroll up to your website. So when you click on this button this will scroll up to the top. Now in the next lecture we will see how to do it. Now since we started this tutorial we've been working on different sections. We have created this beautiful navigation then work on the site title where we have this beautiful button, this background image and then we started creating this beautiful oval carousel. In this carousel we have this amazing cards which can navigate and then we worked on this beautiful blog post with the title, paragraph and created this amazing sidebar. In the sidebar we have categories, popular post, then we have the newsletter and the popular tags. And the last, I have this last post and the pagination. Now this is not the end of this website. To complete this website, we are going to create footer for this website. If I open my finished website, you can see here I have this beautiful footer for this website which you can use anywhere in your any website. So I'm going to just create this beautiful footer. So I'm going to just start with a simple index.html file. Now if we take a look at this main tag, so here we completed the main section of this website and we are moving to create the footer of this website. So we are not going to put the footer inside this main content. So instead I'm going to create a new tag here. So I'm going to create a new command and specify footer. I'm going to copy this command, paste it down here and just close this command to indicate this is the closing footer. Now everything related to footer goes inside this command. To create this footer, I'm going to use footer tag. Now this is the best practice to use footer tag when you're creating your footer. And I'm going to specify a class to it and name it footer. So this will create a footer tag with the class footer. And inside it, I'm going to create a container class. And inside this div, I'm going to have four sections. So as you can see here, in this footer, I have this about us section, newsletter section, Instagram section and follow section. So I'm going to create these four sections in this container. So I'm going to first create about us. So I'm going to create a division tag with the class about us, newsletter section. So I'm going to say here newsletter and I'm going to create another div with the class Instagram. If you are not following me on Instagram, the link is in the description. You can follow me on Instagram and ask me any question about this tutorial. Just after that, I'm going to have my fourth section, which is follow. So I'm going to name it follow. And before I save changes, I'm going to specify here some text. So I'm going to first create H2 heading tag here and say about us. And for this newsletter section, I'm going to create H2 heading tag for now and say newsletter. Then I'm going to add text here in the Instagram section and say here Instagram. And the last, I'm going to specify to this follow section, H2 heading tag and specify follow us. Save the changes. And now as you can see here, we have here four sections. Now I want to specify some style to these sections. So I'm going to just open my style.css file and toggle this window on the right side. So you can see what we are doing. As you know, we completed the main section. So we are not working in the main section now. So I'm gonna create another comment here and name this command footer. And I'm gonna just close this command and I'm gonna put all my styling of the footer inside this command. I'm gonna first select the footer. So in the footer section, Right here, I'm going to first select the footer tag and select footer class. And I'm going to first specify height to this footer, 100%, then specify background. And I'm going to call here PG color variable. When I save the changes, I'm going to have black background to this footer. 
Now just after that, I'm going to specify position relative. Just after that, I want to select the container. So I'm going to say here footer and select the footer class and I'm going to select container. And to this container, I'm going to specify display grid. I'm going to initialize this container as a grid container. And inside this grid container, we know that I have four sections. So I'm going to create here four columns. To create four columns, I'm going to use grid template columns. Using this property, I'm going to create four sections in the same row. I'm going to specify equal width to my every column. I'm going to just specify here 25%. I'm going to specify 25% for the first column, 25% for the second, 25% for the third, and 25% for the fourth. So if you calculate these numbers, you are going to get your 100% width. But to simplify this work, you can also specify here instead, specifying this 25%, you can just say here one FR. It means it takes the equal width of the viewport. So I'm going to just change this 25% to 1 FR. So now all this column has equal width. But now you can simplify this sentence as well. So I'm going to just get rid of this sentence and call repeat method. I want to specify my first parameter. So I'm going to say here 4. So I want to create 4 columns. So I'm going to specify my first parameter 4 because I want to create four columns. If you wanted to create two columns, you can specify two here. But for now, I want to create four columns. So I'm going to specify four here. And now the next parameter you want to specify to this repeat method is the width of the column. I want to specify equal width to my all columns. So I'm going to specify one FR. Now when you save the changes, as you can see, you have here four columns with equal width. Now this is actually very simple to create four columns. Just after this container, I'm going to just select footer again, then select the footer class and then select the container and I want to select all the descendant div. So I'm going to say here div and specify flex grow one flex basis zero and padding 3rm to the top and bottom and 0.9 to the left and right. Save the changes and as you can see you have some space to your footer. right? Using this flex grow property we are going to specify how much the item will grow relative to the rest of the flexible items inside the same container. So that is why I use here flex grow 1. As you can see we also use here a flex basis. This property used to specify initial width of the flexible items. So we use this property for that. And as you know, we just specify the top and bottom and left and right padding to the footer. Now just after that, I'm going to just maximize this window and just create my about us sections and then move on. Now let's create this about us section where we have this H2 heading tag and the paragraph. So I'm going to just specify here H2 heading tag. I have this H2 heading tag. So I'm going to just specify here about us. So I'm going to specify here text about us, then create a paragraph and specify demo text here. So I'm going to say lorem 20. So this will put 20 demo text in this paragraph. Save the changes. And if you open your website, you can see you have here anchor tag with the demo text. Now I just want to change the color of this H2 heading tag. So I'm going to open the style.css and right here I'm going to specify footer then select the footer tag and specify container and then I'm going to select this about us and then I'm going to select h2 heading tag and I want to specify color white so I'm going to select this variable when I save the changes you can see I have my about us section ready now just after that I'm going to just create my next newsletter section so I'm going to just open the index.html file and in the newsletter section I'm going to create this text, then I'm going to create this input tag and this button. So to create it, I'm going to just open my index.html file and here in this newsletter section, I'm going to first add a paragraph and specify text, stay update with our latest. And just after this paragraph, I'm going to have form element div. 
So I'm going to create a division tag with the class form element and inside it, I'm going to create input tag and specify here placeholder email and just after this input tag, I'm going to create spawn tag and inside the spawn tag, I'm going to have this icon. So I'm going to just specify here icon and specify class to it. So once I have this icon, I'm going to just save the changes and you can see here, I have this input tag with this icon. So I'm going to style it. So I'm going to open this style.css and toggle the window on the right side and just style this newsletter just after this about a section. Now to style this section, I'm going to first select the footer tag, then select the footer class and then select newsletter section. Once I select the newsletter section, I'm going to select the form element class and specify background black and and I want to initialize this element as inline block. So I'm going to say here display inline block. Save the changes and just after that, once I initialize it as an inline block, so I'm going to select footer, select the footer class, then select the newsletter section and then select form element and select the input tag. And to this input tag, I'm going to first specify padding and the padding is going to be 0.5 rem and 0.7 rem. Save the changes. This will add some top and bottom and left and right padding to this input tag. Just after that, I want to remove this border and make this input tag transparent. So I'm going to specify border none. So I'm going to remove the border and specify background transparent. I'm going to specify color white to the text and font family is going to be Joseph. Just after that, I want to specify font size when RAM and save the changes. Now, as you can see, I just remove the border, specify transparent color and just change the font family and specify font size to it. And the last, I'm going to specify with 74%. To make this input tag responsive, I'm going to use percentage unit here. Now, I just wanted to create this button. So, I'm going to just style this button. So, as you know, I just created this button using a spawn tag. So I'm going to first select footer and select the footer class and then select newsletter, select the form element and then select spawn tag. Now to this spawn tag, I'm going to specify background sky, which is the gradient variable and I'm going to specify padding to it, 0.5 rem to the top and bottom and 0.7 to the left and right. Save the changes. You can see you have your button, right? If you want, you can change the cursor as well. So if I just specify here cursor pointer, you're going to have here cursor pointer. Now just after that, I'm going to just change this color of this newsletter. So I'm going to just specify white color to this newsletter. So instead, selecting this newsletter and specifying white color, I'm going to just remove this about us selector. I just select footer, container, and select all the h2 heading tag inside this container you can see here i have white color to my all h2 heading tags now the next thing we are going to create is the instagram section so i'm going to just open the index.html file and in this file let's move on and create this instagram section in this instagram section as you can see i have a few images here so i'm going to just create here a division tag just after this h2 heading tag and specify a class flex row we already specify this class in the global sections so we don't need to specify any style to this class again in this division tag i'm going to create image tag and want to specify my different image so i'm going to first select the asset folder then select the instagram folder and i'm going to first select here the third image and in the alt attribute i'm going to say insta1 just duplicate this line so i'm going to press alt shift down Change this alt attribute to insta2 and this became insta3. I just wanted to change this image as well. And I'm going to choose here thumb card 4. And this third image became third card 5. Save the changes. And if you open your website, you can see you have your Instagram section. I'm going to just duplicate this division tag. So I'm going to select it. 
and just press alt shift down so this will duplicate this division tag and i'm going to change this images so i'm going to select here thumb card 6 and change this image as well i'm going to change it to thumb card 7 and this became thumb card 8 i also want to change this alt attribute it became 4 5 and 6 and i save the changes as you can see i have my instagram section right now i just want to specify some style to these images so it looks like this so to specify some style i'm going to open the style.css and toggle the window on the left side now inside this footer section right here i'm going to style this instagram section so in the style.css file i'm going to first select the footer tag then select the footer class and then select instagram section and just after that i'm going to select image and just after that i'm going to select the division tag and select all my images so i'm going to say here img and to these images i'm going to first specify display inline block then specify width which is going to be 25 percent and height is going to be 50 percent then i'm going to specify margin 0.3 to the top and bottom and 0.4m to the left and right when i save the changes you can see my instagram section is ready right now let's go on and create this beautiful followers section to create this followers section i need to open my index.html file and inside it you can see i have here a follower section so inside this follower section i'm going to first create a paragraph and specify here a text let us be social and just after that, I'm going to create here a division tag. And inside it, I'm going to have my different icons. So I'm going to force create here i tag and specify fab, fa, Facebook. So I'm going to add here a Facebook icon. I'm going to duplicate it and just change this icon. So I'm going to first add Facebook, then add Twitter. Just after that, right here, I'm going to add Instagram. At the last, right here, I'm going to add YouTube. Save the changes. And once you open your website, now I just want to specify some color to it. So you will see this icon. So I'm going to just open the style.css and inside it, in the footer section, I'm going to first select the footer tag, then select the footer class, and then select follow section. And inside it, I have a division tag. And inside this division tag, I'm going to select the eye tag. And to this eye tag, I'm going to specify color white. I want to specify some padding. So I'm going to say here padding 0 for the top, top and bottom and 0.4 RAM for the left and right. When I save the changes, you can see here I have just changed the color of this icon and have some padding. Now as you can see the navigation is almost completed. Now the last thing, we need to create this copyright section and this beautiful button. So let me just explain what is the benefit of this button. Now if you scroll down and you reach at the footer and you want to scroll up at the top. You just need to click on this button when you click on it you can see you are automatically scroll up at the top of your website right i'm going to add this button at the bottom in the footer section but first i'm going to create copyright section so in the index.html i'm going to just create this copyright section just after this division tags and before this closing footer tag i'm going to create a division tag with the class rights and along with that, I also want to add here flex row class. Now inside this div, I'm going to have h4 heading tag and I'm going to specify class to it, which is text gray. Using this class, I'm going to change the color of this text. And inside this h4 heading level element, I'm going to add text here. So I'm going to just copy this text and paste it inside this h4 heading tag. Now I'm going to just get rid of this daily tuition channel text right from here and put that in the anchor tag. So I'm going to create anchor tag here and in the href attribute, I'm going to just specify my YouTube channel link. So I'm going to say here www.youtube.com specify my channel link daily tuition. And just after that, I just wanted to say here target blank. So I want to open this link in the new tab. So I'm going to just see here target blank. And inside this anchor tag, I'm going to specify daily tuition channel. And just after this daily tuition, 
right here i'm going to add anchor tag with the class fab fa youtube so as you know here i have this youtube icon right so when i open my website you can see i have here a text with this youtube icon now just after that i just wanted to style this copyright section so i'm going to open the style.css and right here inside the style.css file just before this closing footer i'm going to first select the footer tag then select the footer class and then select rights and to this rights i'm going to specify justify content center and font family is going to be josephine when i save the changes as you can see i have my copyright text at the center of this document and just change my font family and i want to change the color of this link so I'm going to first select the footer tag, then select the footer class, select the rights, and then select H4 heading tag and select the anchor tag. And just change the color and make them white. So I'm going to specify here white. Save the changes. And now you can see here, I just changed the color of this link. Now, as you can see, your footer is now completely ready. But now we only need to create this beautiful button here. Now to create this button, I'm going to just simply open my index.html file and inside it, I'm going to create this button. Now to create this button, I'm going to just create here, just after this division tag, right here, I'm going to create another div with the class move up. And in this div, I'm going to just specify spawn tag and add an icon. So I'm going to add add tag with the class fast fa arrow circle up. And just after that, I want to increase the size of this icon, so I'm going to use fa to x class. So we have this class in the font awesome website. So I'm going to specify this class here and save the changes. Now, if you open your website, you can see you have this icon right here. You're not going to see it because the color of this icon and the background color is same. But when I specify style to it, you're going to see it. So I'm going to just open the style.css and toggle this window on the left side. And in this footer section, I'm going to specify style to it. So here, I'm going to first select the footer, then select the footer class, and I'm going to select move up class. And to this class, I'm going to specify position absolute, then specify right 6%, top is going to be 50%. When I save the changes, I have this button over here. Now, when I specify color to it, you will see the button so i'm going to specify color to it so i'm going to first select the footer select the footer class then select the move up class and then select the spawn tag and to this spawn tag i'm going to specify color midnight save the changes and when i save it you can see here i have this button right now i want to create hover effect on this button so i'm going to select this spawn tag again so i'm going to just copy this selector paste it down here and just create hover effect on it and want to change this color of this icon so i'm going to specify color white and change the cursor as well to pointer when i save the changes you can see here you can see i'm going to change the color of this icon when i hover on it now the last thing we need to add functionality to this icon so when i click on this icon i want to scroll up at the top right like this so in the finished website, when I click on this icon, I'm going to scroll up at the top. To add this functionality, I'm going to just open my main.js file and inside it, I want to add some code. Now in this main.js file, I'm going to first create here a command and just say click to scroll top. And I'm going to call here jQuery object and in the single code, I'm going to call move up class to select the move up element then select the spawn tag to select this icon just after that i want to call here click event to this icon so i'm going to just see here click and in the parenthesis i'm going to call the handler function so i'm going to see here function and just specify the body of this function now when i click on this button i want to scroll at the top of this document so i'm going to just select this document the simple way to select this document is using the jquery object just call it and in the single code select html and the body and to this body i'm going to call animate method and i'm going to specify property 
scroll top and I'm going to initialize this property 0 and just after that I'm going to specify the duration for this animation so I'm going to just specify here comma to specify the second parameter and specify one second here specify the semicolon to end of the statement save the changes and that's done and now when I click on this button I'm going to scroll at the top right you can change this duration as well if I specify here 3 seconds, it takes 3 seconds to scroll up. When I click on this button, this will take 3 seconds to scroll up. Right? So I'm going to just specify here 1 second. And now you can see your website is completely ready. Isn't it great? You have been successfully created your own website with just HTML and CSS. But wait, this is not the end of this tutorial. We need to make sure this website is responsive for any device. If this website is not responsive, then it is worthless. So I'm going to make this website responsive. So let me first check, is this website responsive or not? So I'm going to open the inspect tool. So I'm going to press Ctrl Shift I and open the inspect tool and just click on this mobile icon. When I click on it, I have my viewport and I just want to decrease this viewport to the mobile version. So I'm going to just click on this 320 pixel viewport. So now as you can see this website is not responsive so we need to make this website responsive for any device to make this website responsive i'm going to open the style.css file and add some style to it now as you know you can see here this website not this website is not responsive now i just want to make this website responsive so the very first thing i'm going to make this website responsive now the very first thing you need to first make oval character responsive so I'm going to first make this oval carousel responsive and then move to the next section. So I'm going to just make this oval carousel responsive. So it's very easy to make this responsive. So I'm going to just open the main.js file and inside it to this oval carousel I have a property called responsive. I'm going to use that property to make this oval carousel responsive. So I'm going to just add here a property responsive and to this property i'm going to specify an object now i'm not going to specify here an object instead i'm going to create an object and specify that variable name right here so i'm going to create responsive object so i'm going to specify that object here and just create this variable at the top right here so at the top i'm going to create a constant variable responsive and to this variable i'm going to initialize my different breakpoints so as you can see here at 320 pixel or you can say at the breakpoint 320 I want only one carousel item so I'm going to just say here at breakpoint 320 I only want one item so I'm going to say here items one save the changes and now if you open your website you can see you have only one carousel item right now let's increase the size of this viewport and now what I want when viewport is equal to 560 pixel I want to add here two carousel items so I'm going to specify here comma and then just say if the viewport is equal to 560 pixel I want two items so I'm going to say here items two when I save the changes you can see I have here two items right now just after that I'm going to increase the viewport and just after that if the viewport is equal to 960 and now if the viewport is equal to 960 I have here much space to work with so I'm going to just specify here three carousel items so I'm going to just say here comma and then specify if the viewport is 960 pixel I want to specify items three save the changes and now you can see you have three items here right and when you increase it you have your three items if you want, you can specify further breakpoint as well. Now you know that how to create this responsive oval carousel. Now it's actually very easy to create your own responsive oval carousel. Now what if the viewport is less than 320? You can see this type of result. To solve this problem, I'm going to just create here just before this 320 I'm going to just specify 0 and if the viewport is 0 
I'm going to just specify here items one. Don't forget to specify colon here and just save the changes. When you save it, you can see you have only one item here, right? So this carousel is now worked on any device, right? Now let's move on to the next section. So I'm going to just open my mobile view and as you can see here, this section is not responsive. So we need to make this section responsive. So let's see how to do it. Now at the last, here is the difficult part comes in. Most of the beginners don't know how to make their website responsive. To make your website responsive, you just need to know few things. Now when we started this tutorial, I had created a simple responsive navigation menu. You know that how to create it. But now did you notice we use their media query. Using media query, you can create any website responsive. There is only way to create your website responsive is using media query. So let me show you what is the benefit of media query. We know that we use media query to specify different style to the element depending on the viewport. So as you can see here, I have a media query of the maximum width 750 pixel. The viewport is equal to 750 pixel or less than that. I'm going to apply these properties to the element. We already familiar with it. But now I want to make this website responsive. So this media query help us a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create here a command and create a media query for 1130 pixel for this viewport, right? Now at this viewport, you can see everything is fine, but the footer and this post info behave differently. When I decrease the viewport, you can see this footer behave differently. So as you can see here, this post info is also behave differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open 1130 pixel and to this pixel. So I'm going to just copy this command, paste it here, paste it here as well. And just specify this is the closing media query of 1130 pixel 1130. Now inside it, I'm going to add media only screen and I'm going to say here max width 1130 pixel. So when the viewport is equal to 1130 pixel or less than that, I want to change some properties of this post info class. So I'm going to first select it. So we have this post info class in the site content class. So I'm going to select the site content, then select the post content. And inside this post content, I'm going to have post image. And just after that, I have my post info class. Now to this post info class, I'm going to just specify left 2 rem. Then I'm going to specify bottom 1.2 rem border radius 0%. And to override the default properties, I'm going to use here important keyboard. Save the changes. And when you open your website, you can see you have your post info at the left side of this image. When you increase the size of this viewport, right, you have your post info at the center of this image. And when the viewport is less than 1130, you have your post info at the left side of this image. Now, just after that, I just want to remove this post info from this popular post. When the viewport is equal to 1130 or less than that. So I'm going to just specify here, I'm going to first select site content, then select the sidebar and then select popular post and the last I'm going to select post info and to this post info, I'm going to specify display none. To apply this property and override the default property, I'm going to specify here important keyword. Save the changes and as you can see, I don't have this post info to this popular post. Now, just after that. Down here, I want to create here two rows with two columns. Instead, creating this first row with four columns. So when the viewport is equal to 1130 pixel or less than that, I'm going to have here two columns with two different rows. So I'm going to first select the footer tag, then select the footer and then select the container. And to this container, I'm going to just specify grid template columns. And I'm going to call here repeat method and I want here two columns 
of equal width. So I'm going to just say here two columns of one FR. Save the changes. And now you can see here, I have here two columns, right? Now, just after that, I'm going to just decrease this viewport width. And when I reach 750 pixel, I want to create a new media query. So as you can see here, if you take a look at this website, it's not completely responsive. So I want to specify some style when the viewport is equal to 750 pixel. Now, if the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel, I want to change this layout and I want to specify 100% width to this main content and 100% width to this category section to this sidebar. So I'm going to do that in this media query. So as you know, we already have this media query with 750 pixel. So down here, I'm going to just specify if, if the viewport is less than or equal to 750 pixel, I'm going to select the main tag and select site content. And to this site content, I'm going to specify grid template columns 100%. When I save the changes, you can see I have 100% width to these blocks, right? And I have my sidebar just after this pagination right here. And the sidebar is also have 100% width. Now, just after that, let me just check the footer. Now here, what I want, I don't want to add here two rows with two different columns. Instead, I'm going to add here one row with one column. To do that, I'm going to just first select in this 750 pixel breakpoint. I'm going to first select the footer, then select the footer class and select the container. And to this container, I'm going to say grid template columns, repeat one FR. So, so as you can see here, I just wanted to create only one column with 100% width. Save changes. And now if you open your footer, you have here four columns, right? Now, just after that, let me just change this viewport width. And if I'm going to say here, if the viewport is equal to 520 pixel, so I'm going to just say here 520 pixel. Now, when the viewport is equal to 520 pixel or less than that, I just wanted to change the height of this carousel. So I'm going to just open my CSS file and down here, I'm going to first copy this command, paste it down here. And if the viewport is less than or equal to 520 pixel, I'm going to copy this closing comment as well, paste it down here, change this pixel 520. And in this command, inside it, I'm going to create a media query. So I'm going to just say here, media only screen and max width is going to be 520 pixel or less than that. I'm going to just select main tag and I want to select block class. So I'm going to select this block class of this old carousel. And right here, I just want to add some space between this post and this old carousel. So I'm going to change the height of this block. So I'm going to just say here height, 125 viewport height. So the changes. And as you can see, I have some space between this block post and this carousel. Now just after that, I want to remove this post info because if the viewport is less than or equal to 520 pixel, you're going to get this awkward result to this block post. So I'm going to specify display none to it. So in this 520 pixel, I'm going to first select site content, then select the post content class. And inside it, I have post image class and then select post info class. Display property is going to be none. Save the changes. Now as you can see, I don't have this post info to this blog post. So you don't need to worry about anything. Now just out of that, let me just check my website. And now you can see everything is fine. Now I just want to remove this padding from these footers. I'm going to first select the footer. Then select the footer class. 
and then select container i'm going to select all the descent and div so i'm going to say here padding and i'm going to say here padding 1 rem to the top and bottom and 0.9 rem to the left and right and to apply this property and override the default i'm going to use important queue save the changes and if i open my footer you can see i have different padding here now the last thing i just wanted to specify some padding to this copyright section so i'm going to just add here footer i'm going to select the rights and i want to add padding to it so i'm going to have here padding zero for the top and bottom and 1.4 for the left and right save the changes and as you can see here i have padding to this copyright text i'm going to specify here text align center and save it i have my text at the center of this document now if you scroll up and check your website you can see your website is now completely responsive for any device now let me just open the smallest device so i'm going to just open the mobile of the viewport 320 now the last thing i want to align this toggle menu to align this toggle menu in this 520 pixel media query i'm going to first select the nav tag and select toggle collapse class and as you know we specify width property to this toggle collapse class so i'm going to change it so i'm going to specify width 80 percent and overwrite the default property using important keyword save the changes when i save it as you can see i have my toggle menu here right if you take a look at your website now it's completely responsive Now your website is responsive for any device. Now let me just check this website is responsive for tablet or not. So if I just open the tablet view, you can see website is responsive for tablet as well. And you can also use this move top button when you click on it this will automatically move your cursor on the top it is very simple to make your website responsive for any device now, in the next lecture we will understand how to specify this beautiful animation to your website this loading animation when you scroll you can see you have this scroll animation so in the next lecture we will see how to add this scroll animation to your website now as you know we've been working on this website since a while and we successfully completed our first HTML and responsive website with ease. Now the last thing we are going to specify to this website is animation. Now I just wanted to add this beautiful scrolling animation to this website. When we scroll down, you're going to get this type of animation to your website. Now if you don't want to add any animation, you can leave your website as it is. But I want to add this animation to make the website interactive and attractive. So I'm going to just add this animation in my website. So to add it, I'm going to just open a new tab and search for AOS. It means I want to search for animation on scroll library. I'm going to search for it on Google. And as you can see here, I have my animate on scroll library here. So I'm going to click on it. And once I have this library, I'm going to just scroll down to get my animation. So as you can see here, to add this animation, you just need to add this data attribute to your element. It doesn't matter which element you are choosing. You just need to add this data attribute to that element and then the element will behave like this animation. So you can add different animation and when you scroll down, you can see you have tons of animation here. Now I'm going to use some of them in my website so I'm going to first download this library and copy and paste few files in my project so I'm going to just download this library from this download button so when I click on this download button I'm going to get a zip file of this library I already downloaded it so I'm not going to download it again so I'm going to just open the file now as you can see I have this animation on scroll library file right here so I'm going to just extract it so I'm going to just right click here and say extract 
here. So once I have this file in the folder, I'm going to just open this folder and in this folder, you just need to open the dixt folder and just use these two files to add animation to your element. So this is your CSS file and this is your JavaScript file. So I'm going to just copy both these files at the same time. I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy this file and paste it inside my project directory inside the CSS folder. So as you can see here, I'm in my root directory of my project and inside it, I'm going to select my CSS folder and open it and paste both these files in this folder. And I just wanted to change the path of this JS file and copy and paste this file inside the JavaScript folder. So I'm going to cut it right from here paste that inside this JavaScript folder. So I'm going to just include this file in the HTML so I can use this data attribute to add animation to my element. So I'm going to just open my index.html file and at the top, I'm going to just first add here. Just after this oval carousel, I'm going to create a comment here and just specify animation on scroll library. And inside the head section, I'm going to add link tag and to the href attribute, I'm going to specify the CSS folder and specify animation on school CSS file here. Just after that, I'm going to just copy this command. And down here, just before this custom JavaScript file, I'm going to just put that command and change this animation on scroll JS library. And here, I'm going to add a script tag with the source attribute to add a JavaScript file. Then locate the JavaScript folder and add the animation on scroll JS file here, right? Now, once we have both this file, just save the document and now you can add any animation to your any HTML element. So I'm going to start from the main section of this website. And so we'll start with this main site title section and to this section, I'm going to add this beautiful side of animation. So when you scroll down, you're going to get this type of fed up animation to your title. So I'm going to add this fade up animation to the site title. So I'm going to first select this division tag, site background division tag. And to this division tag, I'm going to specify attribute data AOS. So I just wanted to add here this fade up animation. So I'm going to just add here fade up. Just save the changes and execute your application. Now when you execute it, where is your site content gone? This has happened because you did not initialize the animation in the main.js file. So before you specify any animation to your any element, you need to first create an instance of animation on scroll library. So you just need to first open main.js file and down here, I'm going to just create an instance of animation on scroll. So I'm going to just say here animation on scroll instance. And here to create an instance, you just need to call animation on scroll and call a method in it and then specify parenthesis save the changes and when i save the changes you can see you have your title section and when you reload the browser you're going to get this beautiful animation to your site title section i'm going to just back to my index.html file and i want to execute this animation after 10 milliseconds so i'm going to do that as well using a data attribute called data animation on scroll delay so using this attribute, you can specify the delay of the animation. So I'm going to just specify here 100. So I'm going to specify after one millisecond, I want to execute this animation. When I save the changes, I have one millisecond delay to this animation. Let's move on and I want to add some animation to these cars as well. So I'm going to just open this car section and I want to add this animation to these cars. So I'm going to just select this block content and add this animation here. So I'm going to add here data attribute with animation on scroll and I want to add fade right animation to it along with that I also want to add animation delay so I'm gonna say here data animation on scroll delay 200 so I'm gonna specify 2 millisecond delay to this animation I'm gonna just copy this statement I'm gonna just copy this data attribute and specify that to my next block content and just change this animation to fade in and I'm going to specify this animation to my third block content and I'm going to change this animation to fade left. Just after that, for the fourth block content, I'm going to copy and paste that animation again and just leave this animation as it is. Save the changes and when you execute your application, you can see you have this type of animation. When you scroll down, 
you have this beautiful animation to your old carousel right now let's move on and add this animation to your blog post so i'm going to just open the index.html file and down here you have your blog post so i'm going to just specify that animation to this blog content now to add animation to your post content i'm going to just specify here just after this class i'm going to just paste my data attribute here and i want to change this animation to zoom in so i'm going to say here zoom in you can get this animation from this animation on scroll website and i'm going to specify that to my second post content as well i'm going to specify that to my third post content as well save the changes when i scroll down you're going to get this zoom in effect to the post content now let's add some animation to these categories so i'm going to just open my sidebar and you can see here i have different categories in this category section now i'm going to specify this animation to this list item so i'm going to just specify here data attribute and i just want to change this animation and specify here fed left and i want to specify a delay one millisecond i'm going to just copy this data attribute and specify that to the second list item and just change this delay to 2 millisecond copy and paste that right here as well change the delay to 3 millisecond specify this data attribute to the fourth list item and change this delay to 4 millisecond and just specify this data attribute to your fifth list item and change this delay to 5 millisecond when I save the changes and reload my website you can see I have this beautiful animation to these categories right now I just wanted to add animation to this blog post so I'm going to just minimize it and specify animation to this post content now to this post content I'm going to just specify the data attribute and I just want to specify here flip up animation so I'm going to say here flip up and I'm going to specify here delay 2 millisecond I'm going to just copy this data attribute and specify that to my second post content change this delay to 3 millisecond specify that to your third post content change this millisecond to 4 millisecond specify this animation to your fourth post content and just change this millisecond and the last I'm going to specify that to my fifth post content and just change this delay save the changes and when you scroll down you can see you have this beautiful animation to your post content now now I just want to add this animation to this newsletter section so I'm going to just add here to this newsletter so I'm going to add here to this newsletter the data attribute and change this animation to fed up specify data delay 3 millisecond just after that I'm going to specify this animation to this popular tags. I'm not going to add this animation to this popular tag division tag. Instead, I'm going to specify this animation to this span tags. So I'm going to just specify this data attribute to this first span tag. And I want to specify flip up animation to this span tag. And I want to specify delay one millisecond. I'm going to copy this data attribute, paste it down here to my second span tag. I just change this delay to 2 millisecond I'm going to change this delay to 3 millisecond to the fourth span tag I'm going to change this delay to 4 millisecond to the fifth span tag I'm going to change this delay to 5 millisecond and I'm going to change here 6 millisecond I'm going to change this delay to 7 millisecond and specify here delay to 8 millisecond save the changes now you can see you can see this type of result you have this beautiful flip up effect to your popular tags just after that i want to add this animation to my footer as well so to add this animation to the footer i'm going to just open the footer tag and right here i'm going to just specify this animation to this division tag to this about us division tag so i'm going to specify this data attribute to this division tag and change this animation to fade right and I'm going to change this delay to millisecond. Just copy this data attribute, specify it to this newsletter section. So I'm going to specify this data attribute to this division tag. And just after that, I'm going to specify this data attribute to this Instagram section. So I'm going to just paste 
this data attribute right here and change this fade right to fade left and I'm going to use the same animation to this follow section as well. So I'm going to paste this data attribute here as well and specify here fade left. Save the changes and now you can see you have this beautiful animation to your footer. Right? Now when you scroll down you have your animation. Congratulations! You have successfully created your first responsive website. Now you're able to create your own website design with HTML and CSS. Don't forget to share your love by pressing like and subscribe button. Like the video if you find anything useful in this tutorial. So that is all for now. I will see you in the next amazing video.